Mary. Let's see how it goes. Dead inside La Lucence. My pick is dead on side, Ollie. What about you? Oh, I like to disagree with you sometimes, Demo, just to be a little bit antagonistic. But hey, in this o instance... Ollie. Ollie, you are entitled to your opinion. Yeah, I'm, I'm never going to take that away from you. Oh, just know. let it be known that your opinion is wrong. I know, and I like to go against you sometimes. And guess what? Sometimes I'm right. Um, I've got to go dead inside. Yep. Dead inside, the name, I think it, it fits me really well. Um, mm. Spelt wrong as know. well. That suits you. Damn, that's uh, it's a cold one. Is that Spain without the S? Y yes, it's it's rain but with a P. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Uh, Thatcher Maverick, uh, what a surprise! So, this new meta is fun, as we said. Did a little bit of the casting yesterday, uh, seeing the new stuff. We've seen Oregon. Nades have became a massive thing now. Explosives galore for attacks. Ash with the three rounds in the breaching is massive. Yeah. It's it, I, I like the balance of it knowing that she's no longer got stuns. Well, I mean it's it's nerfed every ranked main. Yeah, oh for sure. All the ranked mains were crying, but I mean for competitive, it's very, very, very good. Kaden, why am I? Rounding out the defender bands. Kids dorm first demo. Interesting to see they're not going downstairs. Uh, I mean, I, I think, uh, to be fair, I think a lot of teams have went for the upstairs uh more so than a downstairs at the moment i mean it doesn't really matter i mean the the, the two most popular bomb sites you can play it either way you really can uh third bomb site it's there for you i mean all, all all bomb sites are viable on this map keep that in mind uh the kai ban makes the makes the downstairs not as favorable it has to be said um I think if you're, if you're looking at trying to defend the downstairs, and obviously you're going to be dealing with the Thatcher Maverick because that is what everyone bans out, having the kite there is a great thing to do. You can kite off the hatch in electrical. Gives you a lot of space to work with. But whenever that kite ban does come in from some teams, it's not, it's not every day we get to see it, but whenever it does happen, then it kind of moves teams over to the kids, first of all, because you don't, like, it. Kite's not going to be affecting this bomb site. You know, it's not. Compared to the downstairs, kite's massive. Let's see what this round has in store for us then. Start of our Plenty of siege on its way. I think that one team's going to want to make a little bit of an impact here. But dead inside, they're going to be looking to make themselves known on attack. Of course, they are attacking first. Um, so it does. Um, I think they had a side preference, didn't they, Demo? Correct me if I'm wrong. So I, th I think the potential is inside of actually chosen spot. Uh, I think the inside picked the map, and then I assume Lulusens has started on the defense. I think that's I, what's happened. I can't remember. I, the first one the game, because there's no map advantage in this best of five, basically. No. So to give which, the which team advantage. We haven't seen that in a while, because yeah. now the kind of norm is best of five. If you win the upper bracket, you get that first map secured, mm. no matter what. But not here, though. But they do get to choose the first map, which the way you bounce out was there wasn't. You know, it's usually in a best of five, it's ban ban, and then the maps just go. This was a pick pick ban ban. There's a the mission. First kill. Uh, was that from the hatch? Or oh, that was from the holes that he made. Uh, okay. So the bandit, a little bit aggressive, peeking the holes that the ash made and has been punished for it. And that gives them their attic breach that they needed. Again, showing just how powerful ash is. You essentially get a freebie now that you can use wherever you were wishing you were able to use one previously. And that's potentially a kill that you, you know, maybe not, maybe don't get. Uh, especially when you've got other things to be looking to deal with. Deployable shields, yo-yos, weapons, malusies. Some things there that you're going to be looking to use that new sort of on and you know, a little bit of a freebie into that. And of course, allows the wall to get open. Yeah, challenge on and swings the breach. Oh, 
down as well. And it was really the same. Out there. His own. Sky's now come on in. The kill flying on through. It's just a dead inside in the position. So have a man advantage. It's a good setup though, Ollie. They've got the crossfire established. And oh, look at TX. He's looking to try and maybe find the guy in the double window. But as soon as he rips down that barricade, his position will be known. So it only leaves two people on site, bashes it, and then decides to fall back. Nico has eliminated a site member, and there goes the other one. Now it's just down to TX, and he's been caught out. They know that he's off site, and they can go for an easy plant. Nomad will be covered off in the armory. They're obviously trying to hold white at C4. Doesn't land. And at this stage, TX can be a very painful round for him. Has to go up white stairs. Nomad waiting for him, and Nico gets the final kill dead inside. Great start. That attack is picture perfect. Yeah, that's not an engagement that you're going to win very often, challenging on the top of those white stairs from the bottom. Dead inside, securing round number one. As you said yourself, though, a picture perfect attack. Fantastic execute. Nice little picks early on. And very plant focused, getting the diffuser down and really forcing that pressure onto the uh, onto the poor remaining Malusi. Or TX down there on the ground floor. Interesting that they're going to give it another shot up there. I would have definitely thought that they'd, they'd want to switch things up after losing in that sort of fashion. They didn't really have any bite back to their defense. Hmm. It's a tough one. I think the early engagement is quite a big thing for this bomb site. It's a pr it's pretty small. It's very small. Whenever that breach gets opened, whenever attic uh, is taken, whenever someone's in double window, you have what two positions to sit in, and that is back of kids, white stairs, both easily naded. And in this meta, where nades, in my opinion, are a lot more prevalent, that's a tough thing to go against. Albeit, there is no nades uh, from Dead Inside, which is surprising as well. Wamai's banned. And I mean, the Jaeger, not as strong as what it once was with the ADSs. You really have to think about where you're putting these. Uh, usually, uh, whenever I see ADSs be stacked up, if you want to try and go for, you know, like an off-site hold into like another area of the map, used to be you could stack like two ADSs and a Wamai, and that'd be it. No one's getting through it. But now, because of the changes, you kind of have to stack up all the ADS is in one position. Yeah, you've got to put a lot of eggs in one basket as a defender mm -hmm. now, and that can be very easily read into the side of the attack, and then they can choose to deploy their utility elsewhere. I, I do feel like they may be going a little bit overkill on the stuns. Uh, six stuns, you do start to ask the question if, uh, is that necessary, or could we could we worm a sledge into the compo composition uh, and, and bring a few nades, or you know anybody a little bit of throwable utility because as you say there's a lot of pre-placed nade spots all the floor structure you can get nades cooked and thrown up or you can throw them through the floorboards once opened so many different options there and it's something that we've seen historically um in this season of ccs's nades have really been used quite well into the big tower is where the Russians will kick things off. Exactly the same as last time. Good pace as well, Ollie. I mean, uh, still about a minute, minute 40 to go. You've opened up the attic. Uh, I think they have bedroom control. Just waiting to see where their ace can go. Mowgli, he's downstairs. He's looking Ooh. for the hatch and, well, that's unfortunate. Mission. He's just better on that R4C. That really is a he's just better kind of an argument because Mowgli should be getting that kill there. But a mission now, full out of control, able to push on through. You can see he's already destroyed a Goyo shield as well. We'll get refragged by the bandit. There's a bit of an aggressive swing. It's going to result in a kill. That's going to do quite a bit at this point for Lelouch because they don't really want to go any more men down. And with the way that the push is shaping up, it's looking a little bit static, sure. They do have the breach open, but that's going to be guarded from White Stairs. And you need somebody in where Ash just died to be able to take control of White. Now they're going to have to try and shoot the way in. And well, that seems to be what Kazar is looking to do on that Hibana. There's still the problem of the bandit. The bandit has a C4. C4, always a scary thing to go against. Johnny's now going to try and push in and go for the defuse. However, three kills have came out of nowhere for Lalusant. And now Johnny, 
he's left in the clutch position, opens up Attic. Not sure that he's aware that someone's going to be on the other side of that. Now swings around back to his breach and gets eliminated as TX is prone right beside him. But Lucent, out of nowhere, they hold on, Ollie. You've got to ask the question as to why Johnny didn't open Attic up sooner because they knew that Bandit was playing inside of Attic. It just seems like a no-brainer to open it. You need that control to be able to get the plant off. Oh, one one. So maybe not as easy as what we once fought for dead inside after that round. However, that means the kids is locked out. Now we go down to the basement. And this, I think, is the big change of how this bombsite is, is held now. I think it's still similar. I, I mean, wh whenever we go back to, to the, the last patch, whenever Jaeger was still the same and then the way Wamai's worked, uh, this was very, very defender side up, in my opinion. It was very, very tough for the attackers to crack open. Now with the changes to the ADSs, Ollie, not not the case anymore. Really tough for the defenders to try and hold on to bunker. Um, I, I think we see a lot more kind of, they set up and then they leave very, very quickly. As soon as those ADSs are gone, they're out of there. And, and that's the way that you've got to play it because you do need to stay alive. The only saving grace, I think, that the defenders have got in this instance is, as we've already commented on, the lack of grenades mm -hmm. brought from dead inside. Surprising. Very surprising. They're really not leaning into the nades at all. Why am I not being a thing? Jaeger not as strong as they once were. Do you need double soft destruction with Ash and Sophia? Do you need it? Do you need double hard destruction with Hibana and Ace? You could probably get away with just the Havana, I think. I think you could. You just get a hatch and, and mm. look to look to try and pressure the wall. Yep. But if the I mean if the you know the, the option of having uh abilities someone does get I mean they're Russians, they're aggressive all afraid to take the gunfight if you know if a mission gets a, a sniff of anyone he's not using the gadget Ooh. he's gonna go for the hunt and this time it's not worked for him as Mowgli's in their own game he's eliminated the ash and maybe all this is where now the Sophia can come in handy the Sophia's certainly gonna have something to do now but I'm sure they would have rather had a mission alive that's a, a pretty big misplay on the drone work going in and I think maybe a mission working a little bit too far ahead of that drone work the top floor control has now been gained but for what cost we've lost the ash we've lost a large portion of the kills coming in from dead inside so far i don't think that anybody's going to be rotating on up now from the lucent's they're going to be pretty happy playing on that basement level mirror windows in play as well where's their other it's going one to give them something powerful to peek from they've got one on freezer the second one is i'm not sure oh in towards laundry as oh, well the old school mirror okay don't really see that all too often usually we see that aggressive on blue it is usually the other method but not this time around um so i think the since they're quite happy to give blue control over to dead inside at this stage they're probably banking on the c4s they still have two of them uh, Majestic is used his, uh, but Mira has one, so does the Malusi. Two smokes being popped out. A uh, bit of a waste because nobody's followed up with the cover that you have from those grenades, and a bit of a wasted opportunity there for Dead Inside. Potentially could have dropped TX, waste to C4. Both teams just wasting utility. I'm not sure if the smokes were in an attempt to try and bait one of the C4s out. It, it worked to a degree, but mm -hmm. there's still one left on the how mirror. How big so brain are they? That's the question. That's that's the question, is how many steps ahead are they working? Seems as though Sky is not going to be working any steps ahead as he gets taken down. Traded instantly by Kazar. Nico now looking to push on through blue. Not aware that someone's behind the deployable shield. Last three kills come in super quick for the Lucent's. I think that round was said and done pretty much from the point that a mission got taken out in the first 25 seconds. Uh, yeah. Lelucent's very, very easy round. Um, I think the other side played that very poorly. Losing uh, a mission early on. I mean, th this is the question now, Ollie. Are, are, are dead and side getting ahead of themselves? Because, I mean, a mission just swung without any info. Nothing there. I mean, yes, he may have got, you know, some kills in the first round, but other than that, he just died. 
it's not going to work every single round. And I think as soon as Lucent's get an idea that that's how he's going to play, they're going to be able to combat it a little bit better. And that's essentially what we saw happen there in round number three. The biggest problem that I saw in that previous round was there was no direction. There was very little from the attackers in terms of an execute or a plan. And the bringing the same operators every single round, that either leads to one of two things. Either that they've got plans for every single site with those operators, or it leads that they're just their preferred operators or you know preference picks. And they're looking to, you know, take advantage of that and just play them in whatever instance and sort of shove a square shape into a round hole. I, I, I'm not sure which one of the two that it is. I'm sure it's the former. I'm sure that it's that they've got ideas for every site and these are the operators that they're going to be playing. But they really didn't seem to have much of a much of an angle attacking onto that laundry, which is really strange because there was very little pressure from Blue and Tarps, and there was very little pressure, if any, from Freezer. So. You ask yourself the question, well, where did the push come from? Everyone dropped a hatch. That doesn't work. So we go to that third bomb site. So Showers is being left untouched by defenders. They've set up, but nobody's in it. Nobody's there to impact trick the Habana pellets. Uh, one thing that I, I've noticed yesterday, uh, watching the, the new Habana changes, Ollie, is that... <sighs> Basically, Dead Inside are doing it wrong now. They're doing it wrong. They've just used a full set of Havana pellets to open up a hole. What you're supposed to do is use two at a time to bait out the impact. That is the meta right now. Uh, I'm not sure if Dead Inside know that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, hey, it's worked for them. Uh, mostly down to the Lucent's being a little bit lazy and not playing anyone in showers. I mean, Majestic, he has impacts. I don't get why they're not impact tricking the showers. It's kind of, you know, the norm is what you're supposed to do. So a little bit sloppy from both sides, but it's worked out in favor of the attackers. They put a lot of pressure towards that kid's area. Uh, a lot of them gripped up over towards white. They have very little control right now, Ollie, and I worry, never mind! Alibi with an ungodly swing, peeks up, finds another one! You've got to be kidding me, dead inside! How do you let this man do this to you? Oh! This is a little bit of a problem. How many is he going to be able to get from this shower area currently? On three. Can he make it? Clean sweep. Can he make it the ace? Looks as though he's got information. I'm sure his teammates are no! cheering him on. He finds the fourth no! and the fifth! MF goes huge for the Lucent. A flawless round in round number four. How do you let him do that? Oh, I don't... Man, dead inside. All you had to do was destroy a shield. How many times have we seen them bring just this ungodly amount of self-destruction? Yet it's not being used. I'm asking questions, Demo. We saw the free, uh, we saw the showers wall get opened within the first five seconds of the mm -hmm. round. It was straight in through so the window, yep. bang. It, uh, and and you know, it didn't look like the best play, but it didn't look like the worst play based on where the Lucents were playing. I think had we seen Dead Inside capitalize on that a little bit more and actually make use of the control that was available to them, we could have seen a really quick plant come through and a nice post plant held. But we didn't. We just saw everybody sort of then stand outside of that hole in the open and say, Hey, Alibi, do you fancy, do you fancy an ace? Like, MFZ, like, do you fancy it? Because I'm here. You can just shoot me in the head if you like for free. I don't know how they... How they just let someone swing them time and time again. Uh, very, very sloppy from dead inside. And it's cost them. I mean, I think three sloppy rounds in a row. Uh, now there's a bit of momentum behind the defense. They go upstairs now. So they've won this once and lost it once. I will survive. Wait, who sang that? That's just I not something that I needed in my head, survive. I think. survive. Who sung that? Uh, Gloria Gaynor. She sung it. It's a, it's a classic old school mm -hmm. old school song. First I was afraid. I was petrified. We'll get DMC8 if we keep singing with that good. Uh, yeah, exactly. Get the keyboard out. I mean, the stat was talking about Mowgli. It's got to, we got to, we got to mention the guy. He survived, yes. Look at the stat mm -hmm. He's surviving. He's doing a good job. Two deaths inside of five, well, five rounds currently. Yep. 
doing much better than his previous week versus Sleepy. Having it rough right now. Zero kills. Each of them and TX. Ooh. Don't know if I like this or not. I mean, he could try and get away with being misdroned. It's, it's a risky one. Uh, oh, he's got Mowgli baiting for him. Okay, that could work really well. So if TX just plays it safe uh, and just lets Mowgli bait for him, they should be good. And TX could make a really, really big play as they start trying to hunt for that Jaeger. And, well, there's the mission again, trying to get into the thick of it. And he's taking more damage once again. Oh, no. Uh, Nico's room has been ash charged. A mission needs to stop challenging Mowgli on those really tight angles because Mowgli's good at it. <laughs> and he's going to keep punishing you. He's going to keep chip damaging you. And Mowgli's got away with that for free there, and Ash is down at half now, questioning life. Ash is now on a drone. A mission is droning, <laughs> trying to find out any bit of information, making up for the fact that he killed his teammate's drone a few moments ago. They've got one Ash breaching round left now as well. An unusual push here, Demo. They've not gone for the, for the attic play, which we've seen them successfully do. It's the only round we've seen dead inside win so far. It was a very nice, efficient attack onto this top floor. Now they're going for something a bit different, but it's working for them nonetheless. Crossfire is established and kills starting to come on through. Baiting out a lot of utility there, and Johnny has found a pocket of safety to get this diffuser down in. It looks as though it's going to go down and be confirmed, and the crossfire is still proving dividends. A mission, another kill from the top of those white stairs, and it is now all down to Slaz and Majestic. Is there any bit of a tough one? Johnny's going to pick up a kill for himself, and it was almost a flawless round, but Majestic's got something to say about it. He's going to find a mission before Johnny shuts him down dead inside. Another good attack onto that top floor, but that isn't going to be enough to win Oregon for them. A light stairs double window. That's all they took. And it worked for them, surprisingly. That's usually a, a bit of a death trap. You jump through that window, C4 smoke, bang, you're dead. Can't get out of that one. But I don't know how they, how they managed to make it work. Um, credit to them. Maybe just catching out Lulucent's by something they maybe haven't been really accustomed to is, you know, a double window jump in with someone holding white stairs, someone on kids as well. So, you know, you have to look at it both ways. Or maybe it's, maybe it's just Lulucent's been a little bit lazy there, uh, sleeping on dead inside and... Well, that means we have one more round to go for this half, and it's a free two so far. Still, Lulusan's in the lead, but dead inside, if they pull this one back, could be a game changer. Uh, last time this one was defend Ollie, pretty miserable for dead inside. Yeah, very miserable indeed. I, honestly, at this point, Demo, I'd quite like to see them go for the, for the west side clear, and to get in on that west side, clear the top floor out, either push Mowgli back down to site or get a kill onto him early on and then look to start putting a bit of pressure onto the usual places. Get a bit of pressure onto Freezer, get a bit of pressure onto Meeting Hatch and look to mount a bit of an attack from there. If they try the same thing, I, I, I just really worry for this opening kill going against them because we've seen so far it's not done dead inside any favours when they lose that opening kill. So, dead inside, all they wanted to take was the hatch, and that was it. Very little blue pressure. Uh, weren't looking for any freezer or laundry uh, takes as well. Uh, difference this time, Ollie, is that Mira has been sacked off. I mean, granted, Mira didn't really have to do anything because they didn't push towards the Mira windows. Those Mira windows were specifically set up in case a freezer uh, laundry take came in. Didn't come for them. Uh, so... They've kind of changed things up. I think knowing that Dead Inside were only interested in one direction, that was uh, the meeting hatch. I like the way that they've spaced out some guys towards the uh, towards the west side as well. Knowing that there were rumors that were lurking there, being Mowgli, who was in Kitchen. Now they've kind of divvied up. They're not just having, you know, one guy push from one direction. All of them came from Big Tower. A mission was searched up. Now he's got a partner. Him and Skytee working together. Both of them stacked up, as you can see. Uh, on that white stair, the drone comes in. And, well, we're going to have trades. The mission takes more damage again from these skinny angles that Mowgli's been able to thread through. TX is trying to support, but he also gets eliminated. And Mowgli, I'm sure, will probably die off. Never mind. He turns on a mission. Bit of a can now. Shapes ring around the rosy. Gets another one. Skytee's down and out. Finally gets eliminated by Nico. 
fabulous work from Mowgli, but I mean, in the crossfire, MF and TX are both dead. Now the team has come out of that great. Dead inside don't have a lot of time to be playing with now, but it isn't going to matter because the diffuser is going to be cold on the ground. Because they're looking in a position to try and pick it up, but no, Majestic comes in with yet another kill. Retreated wow. into Garage, looking to bait out onto that diffuser. Slaz cleans things up onto Nico as they've pushed the way all the way onto the site without the diffuser. And while the attackers, they lost a little bit of direction after that bit of a kerfuffle with Mowgli upstairs. Wow. Very, very tough round to call that one. Extremely aggressive. Mowgli did so well. In fact, he got both of the roamers that were trying to hunt him down. Really good work. I thought he was a dead man. But no. 4-2. The French side leading. Now we have the side switch. Defense for the Russians. French on the attack now. Lineups. We see nades be brought out, which is something that I think was severely lacking in the dead inside attacking lineup. Uh, we see MF now on the sledge. Those nades are going to be very, very vital in clearing out certain positions. Uh, nothing too out of the ordinary, I think, for uh, dead inside. Pretty standard. Uh, Valkyrie with the cameras. I mean, Valkyrie very, very strong, Ollie, but we don't see her all too often in Oregon. No, I think there's other operators that you can bring that are going to give you a bit more value here on Oregon. Um, interesting that it's a mission that's picking on to the Valkyrie as well. You would expect him to be following suit with the uh, you know typical Ash Jaeger main. Don't look to Valk as a fragger. You look to her as a very niche intel operator. The MPX isn't really anything to write home about. But then again, a mission isn't having the greatest day on Ash, so it kind of makes sense to switch things up a little bit. I think the most interesting thing about this is the sides have swapped around is that Lelucents haven't wasted a single round. They're bringing two nades straight off the rip and I hope that they put them to good use because there is all the chance in the world that that little difference is going to make, well, it's going to make a huge difference. It's a small change. It's going to make a huge difference into the way that we're seeing both these two sides approach their attacks here on Oregon. Ash clears away some utility. Nico challenging. I mean, the Russians are feisty today, Ollie. They're just out for blood. They want these kills. But the Lusans are letting them get these easy kills. They're fighting against them. And now we see a bit of a back push. Nomad lurking on the tower stairs. Gonna be there waiting for the opportune moment to try and swing and eliminate someone probably on the pillar i'm sure that's what he's going to be looking for and it will be skyty positioned there nico aggressive and blue also that wall now on bunker has been reinforced and blue control is in favor of the attacking side right now i think for the attacks they, they need to get some info i mean if they were able to drone out where johnny and nico are uh, maybe we could see some ping swings but oh tx i think that was a wall buying eliminate johnny and MF tries to challenge the head glitch onto the bomb and he gets eliminated by Nico. Blue wall being opened up now and that creates that cross section. Cuts off rotations, divides the bomb site in two. Now it's down to the attack, see how well they can hold their mustard. A mission in a good position here to try and get a flank off. It does all depend on where these air jabs have been placed. And how much commotion is going on downstairs. It will slowly oh. get himself through one and just immediately start to swing. But no, takes a load of damage in return. And now his location known. It's going to be difficult for him to make anything happen here. But it does force one of the attackers to keep an eye on those rear stage stairs. Because are now seeing a bit of damage on the site as well. As Toxic Babe canisters are flying out. Mowgli looking to try and get himself in a position to plant. But a plant is certainly possible here from Lelucent. So all it's going to take is Mowgli to squeeze on through. A Toxic Babe will be his undoing though. That's going to be another one baited out. Only one left in hand now for Kazar, but with only 30 seconds left remaining, this is where that smoke becomes so, so valuable. A mission now looking to rejoin the fray after he had a little break, but he is going to get taken down. Magnet going to say, well, it doesn't matter that I haven't got any air jobs left. I'm just going to sit there and watch it anyway. 
plan now starting to go down as Mogul is confirming the diffuser and the kills are going to start to fly on through. That plant is going to be successful. The C4 toss swung, but it was late. What a flick there from TX over onto Kazar, keeping control of that post plant. Skyty now looking to try and make something happen, but he's going to swing on to his certain impending doom as the last two kills come flying in from Slaz. It's a great execute. That's how to do it. Opened up that crossfire and Slaz picks up kills from it. Very, very tough retake. Uh, Lelusance, another round. Another round in their favor. 5-2. First attack in their favor. How will their second one do? They're going to go and attack the same bomb site. Dead inside of locked in the basement. What changes are we going to see? No Valkyrie this time. Johnny on the bandit now. Hmm. Bandit. Interesting choice. Uh, guessing they're probably just going to try and reinforce off blue as quick as they can. And they just place the bandits down. Don't think there'll be too much of an issue though. Granted, I think... Uh, with the nades that MF is bringing. Just toss one nade from electrical over onto the bandits. No real issue. I, I see the thought behind it, but realistically, Johnny, I don't think he's going to get a chance to get good value out of the bandits because it is so easily naded. I thought you were calling me Johnny then. Then I realized we've got Johnny on the bandit. You know what I've got in my head now, now, Demo? What? Go, Johnny, go, go, go. Go, Johnny, go, go, go. Surely you can get that in somewhere. Down where is he at? We're in New Orleans. That's a good one. Also, another another favorite one of uh, Chuck Berry is uh, Run, Rudolph Run. Great song for this time of the year. Run, Rudolph Run? Yep. What's that one? Santa's gotta make it to town. Uh, you know, Home Alone over the run for the airport. Yeah, great film. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Nico. Ooh. Ooh. Mowgli. See you later, pal. Nico, Nico's so aggro today, man. I think I'd be aggro as well. It's map one in the best of five demo. This is the map to like throw caution to the wind and swing everything. Set the tempo. I mean, is it working for them? I mean, uh, a little bit. I mean, it's still now three versus four. Ace is still up. Still have soft destruction. Majestic's up. He's been having a great game so far. Eight and two for him. Yeah, a minute to go. Three people dead. And I wonder if Lelucent, are they going to take it slow? Or are they just going to try and pull these kills back and challenge the Russians? Bit of a tough one to do. They're going to try and burn through some utility that may have been lurking on the staircase. Goyo shield in front of Nico. Any impacts? One impact from TX. Could honestly maybe try and swing an impact onto the shield. That could be a play for them. But Nico has since then moved away from the Goyo shield. Now being just, just above the stairs, just nice and close to the wall. Yeah, Nico desperate to swing this. But this is a round that Dead Inside really need to lock in the bag. They can't afford for the Lucents to get onto that match point, and despite a reasonable man advantage and quite a large utility advantage, they can't be squandering that at this point. They've still got two C4s left, and we're entering the final minute. That's when these C4s become super, super valuable. Johnny there, I'm not even going to need a C4 for that one. I'm going to find the head of TX pretty much straight away. And he's going to be down to Majestic. It looks as though he's going to follow the same line as TX and you can already see Johnny's silhouette aimed on exactly the same spot. Toxic Babe Canister's cutting off tarps just in case at this point as it looks as though Slaz is trying to push his way on through. Majestic is going to swing over onto Johnny and get a bit of chip damage over onto Nico but is it going to be enough? 30 seconds left remaining. Still not in a strong Ooh. position. Get slammed! Slaz finds the head of Nico there down the side of the deployable shield and all of a sudden this became doable. Still 20 seconds left remaining. Another Toxic Babe canister just getting pre-placed there. It could seriously be the undoing as Majestic doesn't sit on the most health. Slaz looking to swing his way around. He will fall and that's almost certainly going to lock it away. But no, the oh, swing comes through. Trade? A trade to finish things off and the defenders... They're going to get away with that by the skin of their teeth. Nearly had that one unlucky for Majestic. 
gets the trade, but if a defender gets a trade, then they, they win the round. So a siege works. 5-3. A very needed round for dead inside. Just pulls it back ever so closer. Still a two-round gap nonetheless. That's the basement locked out for them. Now they have to go up and we have not seen them defend it yet. Lineups. We see a mute come in now for a mission. Attackers haven't changed anything as well. Not too much. I think both lineups have been pretty solid. Nearly for like every bomb site. I think the only thing that I like is like more than the other is I kind of like Lelucence's attacker lineup more than I like Dead Inside just because they've got the nades. They're lacking the, the Hibana. That's literally the only difference. Mm. But is it costing them? I'm not I'm not sure it is. I think the nades are giving them, you know, a lot of value. It is slightly different though when attacking on this top floor because you know you have got the attic, you have got generator wall. There's a couple of other things that you maybe want to look to get open, but those nades again can be really powerful. I'm surprised we've seen so much nomad pick, you know, demo. Uh, I think both teams respecting one another, knowing that they have capable roamers, knowing that it is going to be an aggressive matchup. I think having that nomad uh, is is key. Every single round, we have seen some form of room attempt by each team. Every round. We've seen how well the room game worked for Mowgli whenever he was on the defense. Now we're seeing Nico uh, and also Johnny as well. You know, these very aggressive kind of room games that they can bring to the table. So, uh, yeah, I'm not really surprised that the Nomad is being brought religiously. It seems to be big round after big round here for Dead Inside. There's really nothing that they, uh, that they can do to let up. They've got to keep that foot on the gas well and truly. I think as soon as Lelucent's get a sniff of that match point, they're going to be on converting it and advancing us through. Nico's way off site at the moment. I wonder if he's going to get himself onto a window potentially. Uh, the, f the thing is with, with the way Oregon plays, if you're only coming from Attic and uh, kind of Bedroom Armory, uh, anyone on the west side who may be Roman have, has very, very little impact. Uh, you can't really go for jump outs anymore with you know, the one second detection. Very, very tough, I think, for Roamers on, on this map now if they're just pushing kind of directly into sight. Can't do a whole lot. I mean, if they were trying to go below, uh, maybe, you know, if a buck was brought in to kind of spice things up, then yeah, Nick would have a very good chance. But other than that, I mean, Majestic, Ooh. I mean, why is he looking to go up white? For what reason? They're going for an attic bedroom take? Why do you need white stairs control? Is the Nomad gone as well? Slaz looking maybe to smoke things off just a little bit and... Yeah, high ace charge in the smoke. Guess open. <laughs> they smoked an ace charge. Lovely. Maybe they thought he was actually going to plant just in the door. That also could have been an option. Ooh, oh, there we oh. go. That's why we bring the nades. Wait, was that... that? Wait, where did that come from? Did that roll down from, from a vertical hole? It might have been, but Sky D, he's wasting no time but Lelusant. They still pull off the victory. That nade only? Was, was that rolled down one of the holes and then land it in Zulu? Because that, think... that guy was on the breach. Sledge was on the breach. I think that... It, how big is your brain, Demo? Is it an incredible play or is it no. just a little bit of, you know, a no. little bit of good fortune? No, there's no way. There's no way that he predicts a nade will roll down onto a Jaeger playing Zulu. And he's in breach. No chance. Well, if we get an opportunity to interview, we will have to ask Mr. MF if that is the case. Match point now. Going against both our predictions demo. I mean, at this point, all it says to me is that Dead Inside is still going to win because we can never be wrong. It just means we're likely to see more maps. Or are you, uh, are you gonna do your usual glory supporting thing and be Lelucent's biggest number one fan all of a sudden? Uh, when do I ever do that? 
I mean, I think we have this conversation quite regularly, Demo. Don't know what you're talking about. I support Man United, don't you? Uh, yes. Or has that changed now? <laughs> no, 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 no. Why, why would I support anything but the best team in the world? Interesting that Dead Inside are going upstairs again. I'm surprised they've not rolled the dice on that mid floor and just seen if they could do anything differently. But they went a million miles away and defending successfully up here. They just need to honestly get those trades. It's the trades that are killing them. I think for both sides, it has been. I mean, it. I think it's been very kind of like one-sided in terms of how the kills have been coming in for a lot of the rounds. I mean, we ha we've had a couple of, of close rounds, but it hasn't been that back and forth. It's usually pretty decisive, I think, for the most part. And right now, two kills for Lelucent's mute and the smoke. Both dead? That's a big worry for the Russian side to lose them too early on. Uh, again, Lulucent's looking to push directly into bombsite via the breach. They have had no interest in going for like big tower attic. They've been trying to open up attic from the from the trophy side. Nico, another aggressive swing. Just as his deployable shield is destroyed, it takes off Mowgli's head. The ash is gone. Txo with the response. Johnny off the board now, and another swing, Skyty. How on earth have you won that engagement? Nico rotates into Attic as someone is lurking and another kill fires through. But they cannot hold on. Hello, Lusance. Good half? Oh, it's 7-3 already. Yeah, demo is match point. I didn't know it was match point. It's locked in. Wow. 7-3. Well, Lusance. What a fantastic job. I think, honestly... If it wasn't for Slaz being consistent, they would have lost that round because we just saw people swinging on doorway after do straight into map number two here. Dead inside now at a one map disadvantage, but this is a best of five. You can, of course, afford to lose a map, but you don't really want to go down by more than a couple because then you have to uh, you have to do the impossible. You have to come out with a big comeback. So dead inside, they want to hit the ground running here on Villa. Villa, both teams have played Villa this season. Uh, the Lusants have played it once. Dead Inside have played it twice. And I worry a little bit uh, about this Villa. And the reason why, Ollie, is because Dead Inside played Team Wanted on Villa and they lost 7-5. The Lusants played Team Wanted and they won 7-2. So both teams played the same team on the same map and the Lusants looked a heck of a lot better on it. That tells you all you need to know. The Lusants have looked pretty good all evening and I think if they continue in the form that we saw them play in on Oregon, it's going to be very difficult for Dead Inside to you know do anything different. They're going to have to change things up quite significantly. A change that we are seeing is in the bands. Carbon copy of the bands aside from in Oregon, Cade was banned, and here in Villa, the old mirror. She's been taken away. Into the cage you go for this map. Aviator Games Room going to kick things off. Because, of course, dead inside to start on the defense. Whose map, whose map pick was dead inside, Demo? Uh, dead inside, they picked Oregon. So this is La Lucent's map pick. I mean, they... that's, that doesn't look good at all, whichever way you no, put it. No, uh, I think La Lucent's right now, this is their map to lose. Um, I think out of all the maps that Dead inside probably want this day away from, it would have been this. I think quite smartly, knowing that it's a pick, pick, ban, ban system. La Lucent's straight in. It's going to be a I tough mean... one. If, you, if you're going to look at, if we're going to try and find a, a silver lining to this dark cloud that is hanging over dead inside, it is potentially that you've got defense on Villa. There are worse places to be. Um, it's by no means what it was, but it's doable. You know, you can get away with 
um, you know, attack being a little bit harder than it is to defend here on Villa. But then again, if you're going up against a coordinated team that have got a good idea of what they're doing, it's going to be very difficult. And so far for me tonight, that team is going to be Lelucent. Uh, me and Demo both pitted dead inside to come out of the gate swinging, but they didn't. Lelucent's beat dead inside 7-3 on Oregon where they lost it in the same fashion in their first meeting. Well, 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 stuff. how the turntables. Oh, how the tables have turned, Demo. Um, what, what do you think about this these, This kind of new strategy that's kind of arose in Villa uh, with the way that now teams are trying to hold study from Vault? What do you think of that? I think Vault's always been a really interesting part of Villa. They reinforce it? Uh, but it can be a little bit of a coffin sometimes, especially when nades are a thing and Wamai is banned. We know that, you know, Lelucents make use of the nades. We've seen MF get a couple of nade kills so far and at least some downs with those grenades. I, I, th I think it's a risky strategy, Con. So the way I look at it, the way teams have been playing is Vault is a very strong position to hold with a deployable shield, which there is many of those. The big thing about study is that it usually is pretty easy for uh, attackers to take it. Um, all you have to do is walk in. There's no real challenge. I basically see the strategy the same way that teams are trying to hold a bunker in Oregon, where they'd open up part of the wall in electrical and then try and hold a deployable shield from pillar. First of all, it means that the attackers just can't waltz in and take what they want on study. It means they're going to have to work for it. You know, they can't cross into, you know, uh, in towards the main stairs without having to challenge these uh, holes that are being made. Very, very tough to deal with as an attacker. It kind of steers you away from it. One thing that I find interesting uh, that Dead Inside have done, which I usually don't see, is that they've now reinforced it, knowing that the, the, the push from the uh, attackers are coming in from uh, the statue and trophy side of things, pushing down in towards 90, looking to open up towards that vault wall. They've reinforced off the study. Usually that's left soft, and then you can rotate a defender in the study, and they can then defend Aviator from that position. Very strange to see them uh, reinforce it now, but perhaps fearing a late rotate, which granted has happened. Slaz, he's now on the study balcony, perhaps maybe looking for a pick with somebody not being uh, aware that he's out there. I think Nico heard the rappel in, so they know that there is at least one guy lingering, waiting for a freebie. Slaz's positioning is always really good, and to see him in that position now, just goes to show how quick he is to adapt and be the person to say i will go into that position i'm going to make that rotation and now look what he's doing he's able to provide a nice little cut off as soon as that wall gets as soon as that barricade gets open he's potentially even going to have a line of sight over through onto a mission you can see smoke grenades coming on through now toxic bay trying to deny the plan but the vault door providing enough cover c4 <gasps> swinging and missing kills flying but the diffuser confirmed now a difficult tricky post plant situation it is going to be a two versus four not really the position that you do want to be in mf has got a bit of utility to play with an air job's gone off on the stairs but kazar is going to look to try and stick this diffuser a swing comes through but it isn't going to be enough johnny he's going to be there with the shutdown and this is almost certainly going the way of dead inside good plant execute from the lucent but holding on to the post plant just not working for them uh, as soon as that diffuser went down, I mean, I think, um, honestly, Dead Inside, they were happy enough to let them have it. They knew they had the room pressure from below. Uh, and, and from there, yeah, it was pretty simple for them to pick up those kills. And uh, Nico had a very, very important challenge on the Slaz, and he won that one. So well done to Nico. Um, so, yeah, Dead Inside. A little bit sketchy at times, but uh, a lot less aggro, which I think is good to see, Ollie. Whenever you're on Villa defense, which we know is... It's pretty easy for defenders to hold on to a lot of these bomb sites without really any effort. All the pressure's on the attackers. And I think that's kind of where uh, Dead Inside went wrong in Oregon, was that they were just, they were at the mercy of Lelucent. They were throwing themselves and giving Lelucent these free kills. They're not doing it this time around. No, they seem a much better team, much more composed, and as you say, not swinging carelessly onto doorways. And let's be honest, Emma, there were some rounds that Lelucent's won back on Oregon that they really oughtn't to have done. Uh, I think of the last round, for example, it was won purely by Slaz's positioning and the fact that he was able to pick up a couple of kills because the rest of his team were just swinging single doorways. That isn't a strategy, that isn't something that's repeatable. So the Lucents need to be careful that they don't get themselves into into those bad habits over the course of this series and, and maintain, you know, a, a stringent and strict 
way that they're going to look to try and play because if they do start to repeatedly make these mistakes dead inside are going to capitalize on it and they could be in for a long evening and then the question is which team has the has the most stamina which team has the most sort of want and need for for this win here clash being brought in this is going to be for trophy statuary uh scene clash being played yesterday by um who was it? Who was it that played Clash yesterday? I can't remember. I can't remember who was playing Clash, but they were playing Clash in this bomb site. Uh, they did it a little bit back to front. They were playing their Clash in study. Typically, if you're bringing a Clash, you're trying to get aggressive, where they were playing a lot more passive. Uh, speaking of aggression, I mean, we've just seen Mowgli walk in and pick up a, an easy kill. We see a very heavy extension uh, in towards the Aviator and the games. Which, again, you don't see all too often for this kind of bomb site. They've had a massive bit of extension. Nearly covering the entire top floor is what Dead Inside have went for. And I do worry a little bit, Ollie, because they've spread themselves extremely thin to try and hold on to this. Yeah, they're not looking in great shape at the moment. There are certainly some big chinks in their armor. But it's going to be on the loosens to try and take advantage of that. So far, it's going to be Mowgli. He's going to be doing a lot of work. Trades are going to start to come on through, but Mowgli's still on the right side of them. Three kills now, one of those being a very important trade. Majestic has fallen, but you'd hope to think that those air jabs have already been placed out, and the chance of a flank is going to be quite slim. As look at the players that you're going up against. You're going up against a clash, you're going up against a smoke. They're not going to be operators that you're going to be expecting to flank, and as we can already see, they're both inside of the bomb site. Drone information now coming through for Mowgli. Ooh, almost an ace for him as he swings, but a mission will shut him down. Mission on the Clash. The last ditch hope here for Dead Inside. As the Diffuser is going to start to be confirmed. Maybe going to look to try and swing on it, but no, it has been confirmed as a post plant. This isn't where you want to be as a Clash. Very tricky retake ahead of him. He isn't even going to be able to find the first kill. Slaz again, ever consistent with that final kill coming on through. Picks it up inside of Showers. It's going to be all she wrote. Rounds going back and forth. What a piece so far for these two teams. That defense from dead inside was all over the gaff. Don't know what they were attempting. That's a trophy statuary. They extended into walk-in. Already quite a big challenge. Uh, it usually does go pretty well. You know, you're bringing the castle. You have the clash there as well. A lot of protection for that hold. But for some reason, they then extend to aviator and games they are attempting to hold the entire top floor of villa that doesn't work have you seen the size of this map top floor is huge they're trying to defend essentially think of it this way four bomb sites ollie that's what they've tried to attempt and hold tell me how big it is demo so big as big as you that's a hell of a compliment Hold on a minute. Don't get this twisted, you, you sicko. Dead inside are opting for the same bomb site. Are they gonna opt for the same setup? I would argue not, as a mission and instead of choosing the clash, it's picked onto the Legion. What do you think about the Legion pick demo? Do you think that's gonna do anything? Tim Patrick? Potentially, but I don't, I, I don't Why know. are they extending I like again? We, I feel like we're getting past Legion at this point. I feel like Legion's getting left in the dirt. Uh, no, I think the impacts are very valuable. I think they are. I mean, granted, Echo has impacts as well, which is a nice change. I think it kind of brings Echo back into the, the kind of viable area. Wait, does he have, I'm pretty sure Echo has impacts, doesn't he? Let me check. They, uh, they change the loadouts a lot. They change the loadouts on a lot of people. It sometimes can be tough to keep up 24-7 whenever there is, what, 58, Mowgli. 56 operators? Mowgli looking to play aggressive again. I feel like he kind of got away with that, honestly. There's a the, the world where that kill gets put onto Nico, and that's not really a world that Lucent's want to be in, because that's a kill that doesn't get traded any any day of the week. Echo has Nico. impacts. Echo does have Nico's still looking to challenge, but I think the claymore's just been placed on that door, so it's a really nice touch there. Oh, the impact comes through, and it's going to explode the claymore as well. Mowgli, it take a hell of a lot of damage. 
only one bullet at this stage. Someone just open up that soft wall and make something happen here. Nico looking to swing and TX now joining Mowgli. At least attempting to get a refrag if the swing does come on through. Nico in a really good position to do so, but Baited. then gets taken down by TX. Nice little kill there. Easy bait. Oh, but a one for one trade. Even more so, and an even better shot from a mission. That 1.5x, and Skyty has put it in a shift in towards the bar. He's eliminated two now. Look at the HP of Mowgli. Maybe could get a third, maybe get a fourth, who knows? 2v4. French side, not in the greatest of positions. Mowgli looking the challenge on to Skyty, and he himself gets taken out. And uh, Slaz also falls dead inside. A nice easy round for them, some great kills coming out. Here's the thing, right? At what point do you see how much investment is going toward Aviator Games Room and just say, you know what, we're just going to challenge Master Bedroom? We're going to challenge Master Bedroom and we're going to challenge Backstairs. At what uh, point does that become a decision that's made? Because there was so much investment. There were so many people playing over inside of Aviator Games Room. There were soft walls that weren't getting opened by the attackers. It was just a little bit lackluster. I don't think they were expecting to come up against such resistance and potentially were trying to save some utility for later. But it didn't work out for them. Three breaching rounds on Mowgli as well. Three breaching rounds on Ash and that soft wall from study into Aviator still didn't get opened. Very weird indeed. Back up now to the games and aviator now. Setting up the same way. I don't think anything has changed in terms of the defense setup. It looks to be, yeah, pretty much the same. Opening up the wall. Uh, wonderful Lucens are going to try and go for the same thing. They attacked from the uh, Trophy and Statuary side. Had one guy rotate over towards Study pretty late on. They did successfully get down the Diffuser, but the flanks was was the big issue. That's where they were getting hit from. Let's see which direction the push wants to take. A lot of people spawning on the south side, but no one immediately challenging onto the balcony. Still some serious setup going on as I think Johnny's destroying most of the floor. Is Majestic read into that as he heard the shotgun blast. Is he going to be able to maybe get a cheap kill through that floorboard in the early part of the round? A mission rotating up east stairs. You've got to ask the question, why, why are missions out there on the roam? Well, it's going to be Sky T. Actually on south stairs. Playing in quite a nasty position. If he's not been droned, it's going to be a problem. You're going to hope that Mowgli's getting some drone intel on that because if he gets caught two hitting that barbed wire, that could be uh, could be very sad indeed. It'd be a sad way to go for sure. He looks as though he knows that somebody's playing on there. As the drones are now working on ahead. Sky, he's not going to dip out though. He's just going to choose to hold it but just from a slightly different angle. Oh! There's Nico! Nico 2k, uh, did, wait, hold on a minute, did, did that Nomad just get set off? Where was that from? Is that the Goyo on stairs? Must have been. So, again, more, like, that was actually really, really good. Knowing that the, uh, Nomad's on red stairs, Goyo eats up the Nomad to give Jaeger an easy rotate. Very well done. Teamwork makes the dream work, baby. Dead inside, able to get a free kill. Not pay anything for it. A kill onto Mowgli, no less. Nico now can resume the position at the top of these main stairs. Really looking to challenge onto anyone pushing through study. And as we all know, that pushing through study is a bit of a death trap. TX going to make the push, but the deployable shield's there. You are going to very much struggle to kill that person playing behind the deployable shield. Nico now can play a little bit more aggressively because we've got a bit more confidence. Maybe looking to swing fully onto the balcony and swing he does. That's diffuser down as well. This is shaping up to be a flawless round here from dead inside. As MF is the last person at the bottom of main and he's going to get taken out as well. A C4 forces him to rotate. Nico, he's one step ahead. He's dropping the hatch. And he's picking up that last kill. Nico Duque, there he is. He's part of the 2K gang. 
Do you know any other famous 2Ks? How, how do we join Demo? I think, uh, they, I think they like us. I mean, my Steam name is Demo2K. <laughs> ah. uh, Stewie2K, do you know him? Yeah, Stewie2K. Mm -hmm. yeah. Classic. You ever, you, ever, you ever heard of Madden 2K? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I know them. A lot of 2Ks. Interestingly, I don't think that Nico got a 2K. I think he got like a 3K. Mm -hmm. So that means that we have had two bomb sites successfully defended in a row. Now we take a trip down to the kitchen. Tier Sherry bomb site locked in now. Johnny on the pulse. Uh, pulse, really nice pickup, I think, for this bomb site alone. Even though there isn't all too much vertical gameplay, because it, the floor is is a little bit tough. Um, basically, if you look at the floor, there's these big massive beams that go through them as well that are just solid wood that you can't shoot through and you can't open them up. So there is only like certain angles that you can see onto. It's it's not the most favorable. I mean, if you played Villa and you've tried to open it up, you know exactly what I mean. It's tough. If they do try and take above, hopefully we'll be able to see them uh, and you'll see what, what I mean. Um, so, I mean, in terms of worrying about getting like Sledge from above and butt, really isn't that much of an issue, I think, for a pulse. But Johnny, with the information, is going to be key. And even in this position, he can see right down onto the pantry stairs and he sees Mowgli clear as day. So he knows that someone is lurking and they can set up appropriately for this. Oh! oh. Get slammed, Kazar. Mowgli ja swings Dodger. his way on through, working off some information. Wall bang for an opener in the first 40 seconds, and now making good use of somewhere that is seldom used, and that is the basement. But somebody else that's making good use of it is Nico, and Nico's going to find it back as a late trade. Still, you're going to dislike losing the mute, as it's going to be a C4 gone as well, but kill's really coming in thick and fast now for these defenders. We've not even seen a minute of play, and already we have five deaths on the map. Three of those on these attackers, and it's going to make their job very difficult indeed. A mission still got a C4. Sky still got a C4 in pocket, and it looks as though a lot of locations are known at, even at this point, not even halfway through. Sky getting itchy feet, looking to try and push on through, but Majestic, he's going to find one onto Johnny, and that's going to be a kill that goes untraded, leaving it all square at an equal two apiece. This is now quite doable. From these attackers still two c4s to wade through and a whole minute and a half to hatch a cunning plan sky t stuck in pantry now and he's being pressured from all angles gets eliminated however majestic he falls to a mission and now it's a one versus one with a minute to go so this will be a very long and played out round let's see how slaz wants to play it goes in for the diffuse Banshee right behind him. The C4 Ooh. and a great bait from Slaz. Puts a mission in the dirt. Great victory for him in that round. And what gives the Lucents a, a well earned attack round that I think they need at this stage. Only two attacks in Villa. You should be happy with that one more. You're buzzing. You've got the chance at an equal 3 3 split at mm. this point. Mm -hmm. And that isn't anything to take lightly. Trophy room and statuary are going to be chosen by Dead Inside. I'd love to see what the setup's going to be for this. I'd really, I'm really interested to see if they commit to that aviator hold again. And if they do, if Lelucent's read into that and try to push somewhere else, or if they're going to try and mix things up. We're seeing a slightly different operator lineup here. We're not seeing the castle. We're not seeing the clash. There's a, there's a chance here that we're going to see something we've not seen yet from Dead Inside. So, bit of pressure now on dead inside around that. I think a mission should have won that, shouldn't he? Banshee onto the ace. Very little HP. You have a C4 in the pocket as well. A rough one. That's going to sting for a while. We go back upstairs now to the trophy statuary. This is This is the weird one. They extend over towards the uh, aviator and the games room side of things. Uh, nobody from the Lucent's though ha has went anywhere near bedroom. They have taken the challenge, which is, str I mean, 
If you know that they're trying to hold that side of the map, why are you attacking it? This is my point, Demo. Why are you attacking like, where they are? Attack where they're not. It makes no sense whatsoever. They've got all the advantage in the world inside of this aviated games room. We saw Nico eat up a huge chunk of time, grab a kill for his troubles earlier. It, it, it really isn't difficult to try and push through that. I mean, bedroom area. Taking bedroom and, and uh, Astro is, is pretty straightforward. You just need a bit of utility burn, a bit of teamwork, and you're away. I mean, Nico's gone now. I mean, it, we say this, don't we? It's, Nico it's, dies. It's really, really tough to call because this game has kind of been where things haven't worked, and we're like, "Haha, that, that didn't work." You know, how, how foolish could you be? And then they try it again, and it works. It, there's mm. no consistency with this game at the moment. No, there's little consistency from both sides mm -hmm. at this moment, and that—that's the strange thing about it. Is that now all of a sudden Nico's dead? Well, you know, really early on into the round, and it's given a lot of freedom to the Lucents now to do whatever they will. But they've still not really done a lot. They mm. still haven't taken as much control as they could have done with Nico being dead. I mean, their smoke and their mute, extremely aggressive. I mean, the smoke has to challenge with an SMG at, at that distance. I mean, you're not going to win that. That's a gun suited for close range engagements and not long angle fights. And oh, the the French, they've cleared out the Russian hold. Three bodies lying down by the 90 corridor. Now it is into a two versus three. You still have your hard breach. You still have a nade. Nomads there with some flashbangs as well. Now Johnny in a mission. They have to try and clutch it up. Plenty of drones as well. Still winnable. I think it's still winnable here for, for dead inside, but it's going to be a bit of a tough one. Really for both sides, it's going to be a tough one to play. Curious to see how this one's going to play, Ollie. Yeah, it's not going to be an easy one. I love what we're seeing already on the screen. Look over to your right. You can already see Slaz getting himself onto balcony, looking to challenge onto bedroom. Consistently the best positioning player that we've seen tonight. Certainly the best positioning player in the Lucent's always taking that alternate route, that alternate approach and trying to provide more pressure onto whichever side it is that he's attacking onto, whether it's as an attacker or as a defender. He's already getting himself onto that window. That's really crucial. It's going to cut a mission off now. A mission's now locked into a bit of a one versus one. It's going to free up his two teammates, MF and Majestic. Now they're essentially in a two versus one and all of a sudden things start to look a little bit more possible. We're all going to get open as well. A mission not going to go for the bait. Instead going to go for the swing. Finds the kill onto Glass. Johnny comes up trumps as well and it's all down to Majestic. He finds one. Can he find two? 14 seconds is a long time a mission he's going to be in between astro and trophy he's got live ping information does majestic have any information of his own he's really searching for this kill now interestingly going to go for the drop maybe seeing if anyone's playing below with the c4 to deny the plant because he knew that they had intel a great heads up play but in this instance not the right one 4-2 split here going to go to dead inside Definitely winnable uh, from that stage. A maestro left in, in that scenario. And very, very scary operator to go against. And well, for good reason. 4-2. All right, split. All right, split. Uh, now, how are the side changes going to go? The attacks from uh, Dead Inside in Oregon. Pretty lackluster. Just missing that real finish to it. They were extremely aggressive. I don't think they've been as of, as a, uh, as aggressive uh, this map so far. A lot more passive. Not chasing for the kills. Not trying to face check and swing everything. A lot more tame. Now for the attack. I feel as if now they may need to get a little bit more aggressive. Because it's Villa defense you're attacking into. You certainly do need a little bit more tempered aggression. And it's something that we did see Lelucent's not struggling with because Mowgli had plenty of it. But there was often times where he could have been backed up a little bit more, I think. Mm. Mm -hmm. Dead inside now, they've got an advantage and they really can't afford to squander it, though. And that's the important talking point from here on out is that they're 4-2 up. They lost the first map. This map isn't must win, but it would be very, very nice to win. And I think statistically, if you go down two maps in the best of five, it's probably not looking good for the team that goes down two maps. They ain't going to be winning the majority of those best of fives. They really need to be trying to keep a level pegging or at least streak a lead. So Denside, now this is their chance. They've got two rounds in hand. And to try and get themselves onto that match point and get it converted as soon as possible. 
But from the Lucent's point of view, they've got a bit of a mental reset from here on out. They knew that this was going to be a difficult task, and this is their map pick. So you'd hope that their defenses are a little bit more polished, maybe, than their attacks. Where are they attacking from? Where do they want to stage their plan? Seems to be from study side, and also trying to take control of main stairs. Emission and Skyty are both waiting, I'm sure, for some drones, and maybe waiting for the utility to be used up. There is a Banshee and a piece of barbed wire on the stairs. Will have to be taken care of before they start with their push. Mowgli gets things going. Nomad down and out. It's a good start for the defense. There's the drones that we talked about. And obviously, the explosives have came in. And TX has been forced back to the top of the stairs. There goes the stuns. And here comes the mission. Up he goes towards the stairs. And there goes a C4. Unfortunate not to get both of them. Oof. And still doesn't get another one. A mission. He's Iron Man. He's not going down. And he's the last man up. Gets another kill into 1v2. But look at the HP. Even a Maestro camera at this stage is enough to finish them off. And it will be the case. <laughs> there goes the evil eye. Lelucent's first defense. What a quick round to get us started off in this next split, Ollie. A quick round indeed, and for us saying for most of the night that trades, trades, trades have been very lackluster and they haven't been present. Every single kill there was a trade, give or take, uh, some real hyper aggression. You've got to ask a question of dead inside. Why have they thrown the kitchen sink there at main stairs? It's a horrible place to try and gain any sort of control if you haven't at least got study or, I mean, I guess if you've got 90, you're not going to be worried about those main stairs. It's just not the greatest place to mount an entire push from. And quite rightly, the defenders just leaned into the utility, hit the C4s, hit some shots, and it was said and done before, you know, anyone got a chance to really blink. It's certainly a big question over that round. Dead inside of, I, I hasten to use the word throw, but that's one round advantage that they have really easily given away over to the Lucent. Now they've only got one round advantage as opposed to two, and they didn't really give that last round the best shot, arguably. All of a sudden, the Lucent's win this round, it goes four apiece, and it starts to look like a bit of an uphill battle for Dead Inside. Trophy statuary. Shifting over now. Lineups. Not too many changes. Maestro is out. That's the big change. Attack. Not too much either. Mowgli versus Nico. I thought a mission would have been up there, but I think a mission that's probably got more opening deaths than he has opening kills. A mission really hasn't had the best of days, I don't think. I mean, he's on eight kills right now. I think he's picked up here on mm -hmm. Villa. But on Oregon, he didn't have slow. a great time at all. Mm, yeah. I mean, re really, for dead inside, all of them are a little bit just, just too slow. Didn't wake up quick enough. And well, on Villa, they've looked uh, a lot better than what Oregon was. Still a lot of work to be done. Only one round in it, and they're on the attack. That's This is the tough bit. This is where, uh, essentially, the Lusons, they can put their feet up, kick back, relax, and let the attacker just suffocate. That is the, uh, you know, just villa with all the utility, these choke points. I mean, I look at bathroom door. Uh, I look at the statue door. They, they're really, really tough to push into. And even opening up the wall, triple wall, it, it can be a, a bit of a tough one for a lot of teams. C4 gonna fly over the top. Doesn't look to hit though. There, there it goes. He missed it. That's something that you hate to see. I think a nade probably came over at the same time and just forced Majestic mm -hmm. to choose his life or the potential of a kill and rightly chose his life. ADS there doing a lot to keep Slaz alive and the drone flies past his boot. He's gonna continue to play there. His location really heavily known now as Kazar's looking to try and put a bit of pressure onto him as well. Unlikely, really, for Slaz to get out of that situation alive. Maybe he gets to take one with him, but unless he makes an early rotate here, he could really get caught short. Toxic Babe Canister going to go deep. There he goes. But the nade going to fly on through. And he's going to down him. Won't take much until he's finished off. Now Nico can just focus on pushing those 
Astro stares out as well as a mission. He's going to find a kill over onto Majestic. Really not looking good here for the Lucents, as they're essentially in a five versus three. Yeah, TX. Big issue is that barbed wire is going to give his position away. Goes for a quick peek and quickly back down. Uh, I'm looking towards now MF. He's still inside of Statue. He's closing the door. He can play aggressive if he needs to, and I think he might need to, as now Nico's going to walk straight in and take MF's head clean off him. Now TX, who was that roamer, he's close on towards that Statue door near the landing, swings over towards Pig, and he himself gets taken out dead inside of Flawless. A great way to respond after the previous attack. Dead inside, regaining that two round advantage that they came into this split with. Nico really leading the charge there in terms of kills and figuratively as well. Storming the bomb site. Trophy statue are going to be chosen again here, as there's obviously something that the Lucents feel as though they can do differently. But it's a very dangerous position to be in. One round away from a match point, two rounds away from confirming this map. Dead Insider in a really strong position now. The Lucents can't afford to rest on that laurel. They really need to start fighting. What are they going to be able to do differently here? We're seeing already quite a different lineup. We're seeing a Mozzie being brought and a Cade. Cade, of course, instead of the Bandit, maybe looking to place the Electrical from a little bit further away. Keep away from the nades that are being brought on Nico. Mozzie to try and deny a little bit of the drone information that's going on. I, I, I'm not going to say it. Well, I am going to say it, but I don't want to say it. I, I hope that we'll loosen some clutching at the straws here with these last minute changes. MF having a real rough time right now in Villa. Only one kill to his name. A mission in Nico. Nico especially has been leading that charge. Mowgli for the Lucens has been the other one and I just start to look at and think where is everyone else on the Lucens? They would have had some moments but it's again that consistency factor that we come back to Ollie. There hasn't been uh, an awful lot of that for, for either team today. So once again this direct sight take coming in from Bedroom is where Dead Inside will choose to come from. Kide is on the board now, so they've snacked off the bandit in favor for the Electral Claws. Wonder how much of an impact that's going to make. That triple wall will be electrified up. And that means that uh, obviously Dead Inside have to work just a little bit more to get rid and get that wall open. So yeah, pretty, uh, pretty standard at the moment. Nothing too out of the ordinary. No extensions into the walk-in, which is sometimes something we see. Actually, something we've seen that Den Side attempted to do, which was never really pushed to the limit. Uh, I think they have one guy lurking by himself uh, over the other, other side of the map. So they, they have some changes here or there, but for the most part, it's, yeah, it's pretty standard what we expect from this kind of attack. Nico again looking to make an impact onto the deployable shield inside of Astro. We got a nice breach and round that flew on through. I'm not sure if he got it or not. This time Mowgli going to be playing on Astro stairs as well. We've already seen Mowgli do bits on these tight angles before on Oregon, but it's time to get it caught short. Getting it caught in the middle of nowhere as Nico finds a nice little headshot there, and that's an opening kill. Going for dead inside once again. They're really starting to chain them together now. MF below, using some of these holes that have been made for him and just waiting to see if he can thread any needles onto a kill. And he will tag up Nico, but that's it. Just a bit of damage, no kill secured. Slaz close with the shotgun and I like this rotation from the Nomad over towards the Astro window and Slaz, he better get out of there. He's gonna get taken out and he will now rush back to site. Well done to him. MF has found one, but uh, Majestic, the, the wall's open, mate, and he's been caught out. All you have to do is open the bottom, and you can see an angle onto anyone towards the connector. And that's a free versus four in favor of Dead Inside. Some Toxic Babes will be tossed out to try and stem it. But for how long can they hold on? Well, there's 35 seconds left in the round, and Dead Inside, they don't need to rush, but they do need to move fairly swiftly to close this one out. MF has... Really locked into that engagement. Hello? He's going to find a nice kill onto Skyty. That's a big misplay there from Dead Inside. 
MF will be wishing he had a C4 in pocket as Johnny in a mission they look to be pushing on through. A mission finds a kill over onto Slaz. Kazar still pestering at this Astro window. But at this point, he's locking somebody up, and that somebody is MF. MF gonna try and swing out and find the kill. A mission! Grabs a team kill for his troubles, and the final two as well. It doesn't matter if you're gonna clean shop and get everybody. Bit unfortunate there, he had, uh, he had the TK to uh, put a black mark against his name, but the round will know no different. The round goes to dead inside, and that's gonna confirm and lock them into a match point. We're shaping up for another 7-3 demo. I think we're going to be seeing the fourth map uh, at the moment. Looks to be that case. Kasex free. Dead inside. Leading extremely well. Yeah, I don't think this one's going to be dropped anytime soon by the Russian side. La Lusance. That trophy statuary. Really, really struggling. And also, Ollie, this means that if La Lusance wants to go to OT, they're going to need to win every bomb site now. They have to win Aviator, Trophy Statuary, and Kitchen. They have to do all of them. Dead inside. Match point. Fight. The next three and a half minutes will decide if Dead Inside are going to confirm this map here or... If La Lucent have got a little bit of something left in the tank. Question is, did they peak too early? Did they pile everything they had into Oregon and leave anything else for the remaining maps in this best of five series? Going on to Clubhouse next, and that's not a map that you want to take lightly. It may be well known. It may be very well played out. It may be getting a bit older now in terms of newer maps that have been introduced, but it's a map that you need to be on your A game for. I've got a feeling that if Dead Inside slam this round home, they could really start to make a bit of a run of things. It'll all of a sudden then be one map apiece and back to being anybody's. So over to the bomb site. The only bomb site that Lulu Senses actually managed to take a victory in. And it was a very quick round. Uh, a lot of the pressure from the attackers kind of stemmed from the main stairs. Bit of a switch up now for Dead Inside as they have chosen to come in from the bedroom. Mowgli has eliminated one and Nico's also downed as well. A C4 from below, perhaps from MF, is he's gonna rip it and that should be a confirmed kill onto Nico. Yes, it will be. Two kills already for La Lusance and now Dead Inside. You've only three guys left and there's still two minutes to go. This is a bit of a yikes from them. Very much worth, I think, from the side of Lelucent's Mowgli looking to get a bit aggressive onto this now as well. I think he maybe glimpsed somebody there. He's going to get a diffuser down onto Johnny. Skytee finds a kill onto CX, but Mowgli, knowing that somebody's going to be coming to recover that diffuser, trying to check every angle possible, and he's going to get caught out. Mission. He'll be the one to find that kill from Astro. And now a mission can, and Sky T can just take a moment to breathe. Sky T's going to drop, and it looks as though they're maybe going to try and single out MF here. And this is a great play here from Dead Inside. A mission and Sky T with the teamwork really making things happen. This has gone from being a five versus two to now a two versus two. MF, why not just go back to site? A little bit confused as to why he wants to challenge and get even more kills. And that's a two versus two and a winnable two versus two at that. A mission still alive who has been the top dog so far in this game. Can he win against Majestic and Slaz? We've seen him lose against Slaz already in this map. Let's see if he can change that and get the revenge. Both of them looking now to push down towards 90 and into the games room. Will be their option. Another ping onto, I assume, more utility. And there goes the stun. Swings now. On behind the bar. Is he aware? Tries to challenge Vault. The smoke now. Tries to shut them all down. And there's a couple of wall bangs from Slaz, but he's still alive. Majestic right beside him. Is he aware that a mission is literally on the door? Maybe not. So Majestic misses out the opportunity, but Skytee. Just rears his head. He gets eliminated a mission. A great rotate using the holes that have been opened. 
against them, but no time. Lalo sense they hold on for another round, but they have to get two more to pull it back into OT. I've got 21 questions about that round demo. I, it, it was such a great play from Emissions and Skyty. The only thing they did wrong was leave it too late when there was a smoke left. If there's a smoke left, you can't be leaving it that late to try it and push on through. Uh, yeah, it was a very, it was a bit of a missed opportunity. Not a round that they're expected to win, but it was a chance nonetheless. And it keeps Lelucent in it for just a little bit longer. Still 6 4, still only one round required from Dead Inside to lock in Villa. Trophy statuary now being picked now. This is somewhere that we have seen Lelucent struggling. Hasn't the last two times we've seen them play this site, they've lost it. Mainly down to, uh, down to Nico. Charging his way through, but a little bit of an adaptation in the previous round saw a bit of vertical play. Now, maybe some vertical play could be their friend here in trying to deter that push from Nico coming through bathroom. Gonna be a very tough round for La Lusance. This has been the bomb site that they've been obliterated on time after time, never really having any sense of denial. I mean, that wall, triple wall, has been opened up fairly easily by uh, Dead Inside. No real issue on that standpoint. Uh, very little uh, uh, kind of aggressive standpoints towards this side of the map as well. They're giving up bedroom for free. I, I don't know, this stage, do you maybe look for a walk-in hold? Is that an option you go for? Is it too risky at this stage? Do you play safe? Do you go aggressive? So many if, buts, and maybes. I always think of how Sloth played in the CL qualifier, where he just played like a lunatic throughout the entire thing, just because that's his play style. And, and I think there's a lot to be said for just sticking to your guns. And if you're usually an aggressive player, keep playing aggressively because that's what you're used to. Doesn't matter that it's match point. We're not on a series point at this stage. You can still afford to lose a map. You've got to just relax and play how it comes naturally to you. A mission. Is he going to get found out down here? There's always some knowledge of him from whoever's playing behind desk. The last charge going to go through. Slar's not having the comfort of playing behind that desk this time as either the Ash Breaching Round destroyed the deployable shield or he's decided to do something a little bit different because he really has struggled, particularly with Nico. Ooh, and again, Great Nico. Shot. Finding those angles. Mowgli, the real standout player for La Lusance. Only one with double digits. The mission finds another one. La Lusance look to be crumbling. Again, this study uh, hole just not working out for them. and Not the study, the, the bedroom hole not working for them. And, well, there has been one kill back. But they need more. Need more kills than just the one. They've eliminated Nomad. A mission. I mean, 16 kills. Is anyone stopping this man? Doesn't seem to be the case. Skyty and Nico, I'm sure, will probably try and double up and attempt to take Astro, which right now is free. Nobody's there. Nobody's holding on to that room. Bit of a worry. MF tries to challenge a mission. Another one to his kill total. Majestic responds with one kill. Johnny's down. So two versus three, Majestic and Slaz now, 30 seconds. Can they hold on? There's a lot to do in a short amount of time, but Slaz does have two Toxic Babe counters. The question is, can I get into a position to deploy them? You can hear one getting thrown out, but a mission's gonna find the kill, and well, Nico finds the second. Who else but Nico to find that kill as he was such an influential force. I understand that a mission had more kills than him, but the positioning on the side of Nico in that game on Villa was second to none. That's going to lock the map in for Dead Inside. We have got a series on our hands, make no mistake. Dead Inside, one map. That's the map we've just seen. That was Villa. 
well, Lucens, they took map number one of Oregon Villa, and uh, I'm sure that they're going to look to try and continue that now that they've found their form and warmed up into the game, as it were. But before we jump into the game, and as we are locking these bands in, we all know what the bands are going to be. It isn't as important as we all make out. We need to give a quick shout out to Tab Stats. They're, of course, our sponsor for season five here on the CCS EU. Uh, and of course, everybody knows what Tabstats is. If you don't, sling on over to their website, tabstats.com. You can put in your details for your uh, Rainbow Six Siege account. So whatever your username is, whatever your in-game name is, and you can get all of your statistics or your rank histories, everything like that. It's also handy for checking out your opponents. So sling on over there and give them a look. But we are now, of course, back into the game. And we've seen something a bit different here, Demo. We mm -hmm. said that we knew what the bands were going to be. We said that they're not all that important. And then all of a sudden, Thatcher gets let through. Uh, yeah, Capital Ban. Not the most played operator. A lot of people think that, like, oh, Capital's so good. Oh, yeah, you need to ban him. Oh, yeah. I can't remember the last time I seen a Capital be played. He's not a picked operator. Whenever he's let through, teams still don't bring him. I think he's pretty. I think, I think he's he's talked uh, 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 about a lot, but in reality, we don't see a lot of play from him. No, we don't see a great deal of play from Capital. Very situational. Uh, I always think of Capital and a map like Coastline, just because it frees you up as an attacker to bring operators like Capital. I mean, I think of Capital and panics. I, I don't know. That's the first thing I think of. Yeah, potentially. Everyone has the things that they associate things with. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, look at this. What what do we know as Humble Casters Demo? We make a big deal about how Thatcher's available, and all of a sudden, we're getting six picks into Thatcher. Okay, TX is is saving our face. He's making us look like we know at least something about this game. Zephyr swaps out there for the Thatcher. You know... There's a, there's a question as to whether there's a fear of the right operator to switch out for it, but of course, Ash now having three breaching rounds just gives her the edge. Also, Valk Miraban means Wamai and Jaeger are up as well. Mm. First time we're going to see Wamai tonight. That's yeah. a horrible uh, prospect. No, no, we, you know. no, we've seen Wamai tonight, we're not. No, Wamai's been banned in every game. Uh. Has it? Both games? Yeah. The views at home. Ah, the that, different ones. have basically just said, yes, Ollie, you are correct. As always, thank you. The That's exactly was, what they said. The, the, the difference was, was that uh, <laughs> we seen, we seen a mirror ban in Villa where we didn't see a mirror ban in Oregon. That was the, the difference that we had tonight. But other the, than that, it, it's been, it was what, Thatcher, Maverick, both maps, and Thatcher, then this Maverick, time it's yeah. different. This is a terrifying prospect to go up against as well. And... If, even if Dead Inside weren't coming off the back of momentum, I'd say that they have a bit of an advantage here anyway, because look at what they've got available to them. A Bandit, a Cave, a Jaeger, and a Wamai. This is like Soak Central. Oof. All right, I don't like this, because it looks as if he's up to his old tricks again. He's back to his old ways. <laughs> he's already looking for that opening kill. Didn't work for him in Oregon. Thankfully, someone must have told him to get back. You're a bandit. We need you to stay alive. That's a surefire uh, way to get kicked out of the rank stack. One thing that I like is that they're bringing Kaid and Bandit. Uh, both those operators have enough to burn through all EMPs and still have enough to stop wall, which is nice. Mm. Four bandits, two Kaids. Essentially means you need to have four EMPs. Thatcher only gets three. Yeah, it does mean that Thatcher is not less valuable, but there's just a bit more for him to wade through. So we're going to see Thatcher deployed onto construction. There's the kite. Ace is going to try and get the wall open. Does get one panel open, but the Cade comes in. That's another Thatcher being burnt up there as well. Impact nice. it now because the wall's already open. This is fantastic teamwork on the side of Dead Inside. As we said, so central coming in here. So much utility getting flung about. A lot of information for these attackers to be working off, but are they in a position to do so? Pretty fast shots from Mowgli. As it looks as though 
The main wall is still intact as well as a mission's guarding that with his life. No pressure inside a garage. This is a strange attack from the Lucens. They've invested everything into construction and it's yielding nothing. Last EMP being used as well and attempt to open up that main breach, which realistically should have been the first thing that the attacks wanted to go for. It just hasn't worked out like that. Majestic has found one from below. The bullet hole has been used by Johnny. Smoke as well in his way. Drone will spot him out. Nico has joined him in garage, perhaps looking for a run out. But as long as Johnny can hold on to this angle and just disable anyone trying to walk in. There goes the Ash who manages to sprint through and will eliminate the smoke. Johnny has let his teammate down. Nico has eliminated one and trades go back and forth. TX is downed in the crossfire. Mowgli takes even more damage. I see four out of nowhere. Mowgli chasing for the kill. Manages to get the downed and now it's Nico in a one versus one. Him versus Slaz, but Slaz, he wins it out. La Lusance. First round in a very cluster heavy round they come out on top questions need to be asked of johnny's aim <laughs> johnny letting mowgli cross from construction door into construction for then mowgli to run through and pick up two kills incredible stuff changed the course of the round undoubtedly there for the Lelucents. And who is it last alive once again in a good position to pick up that final kill? It's Slaz, consistent as ever. That's a huge first round there. It's going to force now Dead Inside to go back to CCTV room and cash. We all know how Clubhouse plays out. Your attacking rounds are where this game is won and lost. And to be able to come out and pick up your first one into this kind of a lineup as well. You know, we made such a big deal about how they've got such a soak heavy lineup. There was a lot of not misplay with utility, but there was a lot of questionable use of utility and how the attackers were, were kind of throwing it at the defenders for the defenders just to soak it on up. For the Lutons to come away with that round, it's huge. It doesn't really matter if they lose this round here. They've already got one and you realistically, you're expected to win on average, probably two of your attacking rounds on court. Back upstairs, we head to the same bomb site. Almost there. Johnny, bit of a blunder. Dropped the ball on the ash. Should have got that kill. It kind of costed them. Losing smoke. Is that main guy to try and hold down the bomb site? Yeah, the big issue. Um, it's just one of those where the gunfights, they just swung in favor of La Lusance. It happens in Siege. Uh, I'm glad to see that they're going back to the same bomb site. Sometimes teams will automatically change it up and go somewhere else. But, I mean, like I just said, it's, it's one gunfight that kind of decided everything that happened. Mowgli doesn't know his luck here. Mowgli genuinely is thinking, what have I been gifted with? A bandit stood on my drone that has no knowledge and is going to get killed within the first... 40 seconds uh, of the round uh, a mission what are you doing just what's he up to incredible stuff there on the side of the lucents not just the flukiness in getting the drone placement and and the misplay from the bandit but then being able to actually deal with that information and to use it very effectively to gain that early advantage already big chip damage on into skyty as well conscious that somebody could be playing downstairs below of course we can see that that isn't going to be the case although the hatch is open if the opportunity arises we do have nico playing downstairs but a huge opener for the Lucents there. Walls are electrified. No bandit, though, to try and pick the charges up and maybe try and go for a bit of a bandit trick. Burning up some ADSs and whammies. Perhaps to try and open up for a potential nade that maybe MF could come up. Never mind, MF. He's off the board. Nico's found him. The fuse are cold on the ground as well. Nico just lurking, just biding his time. Big standout player in Villa. Seems to get things started already. Four kills in Clubhouse. Now we start to see the attack form up and try and open up in towards that main wall towards the cash room and an impact. Grenade does not land. Second one does though. But very easy enough for Slash just to open up the second one as well. So right now, 40 seconds on the clock. Breach has been opened. Last time it got a little bit hectic. 
I don't think dead inside they're preying on Johnny trying to hold it down. He's in catwalk. He's in the most powerful position to hold this push. Skytee's done a big bit for his team there, taking down Mowgli as well. As he can still prowl in that ground floor and just looking for anything that he can find. He's going to find an easy kill there onto oh. Majestic. But no, the turn and burn. Majestic comes on through and he's able to easily pick Nico off. He is going to get traded out, however, by Kazar the top of those cash stairs but that is again a one for one trade two versus two now 10 seconds left remaining not a lot of health on the side of these attackers and a c4 in hand from johnny but no it isn't going to matter johnny and tx trade each other out one for one again we're coming down to the clutch moments of the round but this time dead inside they're going to come away the victors could have been around again that went to la Lusance, dead inside and sky t in particular just managing to hold on that little bit tighter one round apiece yeah, uh, much more close together. Johnny got his kill. He held his man. Um, Nico, phenomenal work from him. Uh, again, we have to mention him. Unlucky not to kill uh, Habana, but we'll not talk about that. He probably doesn't want us to talk about that. But now we have the bombsite change. Downstairs is where we head to. Line up. Same line up. Except the bandit is gone, Malusi's in. I think it's the only difference that we have. Everything else seems to be pretty steady. So, new Habana changes. This makes this bomb site a heck of a lot easier, Ollie. Do you know why? Hit me with your knowledge demo. Tell All me right. why. So I seen Leon do it yesterday. Attacking this bomb site. Kitchen. Kitchen. Always a pain to try and attack impact tricking and whatnot essentially you can burn through uh, all of the habana pellets if you're bringing two operators with you know uh, impacts each you can you can't do anything you know the, that's one thing that the attackers have already struggled with is that they cannot open up the hatches with habana pellets because it's going to get impact tricked now with the new changes you can either set it to fire six four or two what leon did was he would use the pellets two at a time and he used eight Habana pellets and got four impacts in return because he used them two at a time. That's what you need to do now. Very smart, very smart indeed. The Habana change is something that I'm really excited for. I think, as you say, the level of creativity that it gives you, not only in being able to open up things like castle barricades and, and open walls more effectively and efficiently, but it plays into this impact trick meta. And it, it plays really heavily into that where now, sure, we've got plenty of hard breaches available. They rarely get banned at the moment, but it's because they're easily counted. Now, are they as easily counted now that Hibana is a little bit better? Probably not. And as you see, you know, there's only a certain amount of impacts. And if you can play your cards right, you can certainly get, to, you know, get a bit more out of those three sets of Hibana pellets, if you will. Ooh. Speaking of the Hibana, nice bit of chip damage there onto Nico. It's going to make him think twice about peeking onto that hatch. So what I don't get is that Majestic has just wasted again six. He does know that he only needs four to destroy a hatch, so he's essentially wasted two Hibana pellets. Why? It's just laziness, isn't it? No efficiency. You need to be efficient. Look, this is what I'm talking about. Using the Habana pellets just at a time. Another two goes down. He's burned up another impact now. Johnny's going to have to use it. Johnny is actually nearly dead as he's been gunned from God knows where. Main stairs. He tried to challenge main stairs. Crazy son of a gun. Now, I foresee at the bottom of main stairs is a dangerous prospect indeed, especially when Mowgli's behind it. We can maybe speak on to Memorial now. He knows that a mission's going to be playing in there. A mission still trying to keep hold of that hatch and doing a good job for the meantime. This is going to be a bloodbath as we're entering the final minute already and there's no real sign of too much pressure coming in from these attackers. They haven't got dirt tunnel. They've got kitchen hatch and if everyone tries to drop kitchen hatch, it could be a very short, sharp end. Skyty. Toying with the long angle that Mowgli is holding down on the main stairs. He has to be careful. Because if he dies, that puts a lot more pressure onto the smoke, who is currently being pressured from dirt. A couple of trades come in. It's the defense who come out on top, though. And 
Oh, here comes the shotgun and dirt. You're not challenging that without losing a few bodies. CX still manages to take them out, but the trades are there, dead inside. They hold on. Round number three goes in their favor. I mean, that's how you expect that bomb site to go re in, in reality. If you have uh, dirt control, yeah. Dead inside, they played it very well. They had somebody playing in dirt until the dying few seconds. The attack has never really gained much of a foothold or anything significant to push from. No focus on triple wall instead, putting all the utility onto kitchen hatch and dirt tunnel. And it just wasn't enough. Gym and bedroom. And tertiary bomb site now. A mission, maybe going for a bit of a leg stretch as he threatens the vigil. Still time for him to six pick away as he's going to go over onto the Malusi. Gain a bit more utility potentially. I'm I'm intrigued that, uh, I mean, I suppose the castle hasn't been played, has it? But I do like to see, you know, maybe a few more breaching rounds on this because you do have things that you want to try and get open. We've got the hatch, sure, we've got the sledge. It's possibly not going to come to all too much. And the Claymores, they make a reasonable substitute for the air jobs that you would maybe want to have from the Nomad, of course. Run out onto that balcony. So, so common. A little cheeky Claymore placement can be the difference between you grabbing the kill and not. Good start from dead inside after that earlier round in round number one, which granted potentially could have won. They've got a good comeback. Now they move over to Jim and Bedroom. Good bomb site, in my opinion. A lot of different creative ways you can play it. Uh, they are going to go for the, I would say, the lesser path traveled. And that is extending over towards the catwalk as well. You are taking a lot of utility away from the main bomb site and putting it over towards the catwalk and, and the server and the cash room. You're essentially trying to defend the entire top floor. Not an easy task. Uh, granted, they've actually fell off it very, very quickly. A mission is getting out of there. He knows he's been droned, and whenever that wall starts to get opened up to create that cross, just as it would if it was a cash room defense anyway. The catwalk is uh, a bit of a nasty place to get yourself caught into. Mowgli now. He's going to be that main entry. Banshee. Bit of a weird one. Bit of a weird one. Gets taken out. Now Mowgli, he just sits and waits. I think he's going to try and hunt Skytee, who is that Wamai, and manages to get that kill. Skytee's gone, not knowing that there's an Ash breathing down his neck. That's a 4v5. A good start. Mowgli's got them in. They've taken control of the cash room. Mowgli, another kill for him. 3v5, pressure piled on top of dead inside now. Good pressure as well being applied as Mowgli has got construction control and Slav's looking to join him and back him up now. But there is a rotation over its logistics. TX going to watch that for the time being as the mission finds a nice kill there over onto MF. Maybe a through the hatch kill. So it seems as though a bit of information needs to be gathered at this point from the attacker. They've still got a couple of drones available, but Mowgli's going to die with one in his pocket. A mission. Doing bits inside of logistics and finally gets shut down there by TX. That's going to be damage done though as Nico going to find that kill as a one for one trade. And all of a sudden it's two versus two. This round was looking fantastic for the Lucent and now all of a sudden it's not looking great at all. One versus one. Full health Johnny is going up against a severely battle worn Slaz. Johnny with the Alder inside of the shower. Live information coming through. You can pre-fire for days with that Alder as Slaz peeks around the corner, slow peeking, but it isn't going to cut the mustard. Johnny, the Alder, all said and done. Dead inside. They're going to pick up the round. Now they have a two-round advantage. Big choked opportunity for La Lusance. Two incredible kills from Ugly to get things kicked off, and then it all slips through the fingers. Dead inside, they'll capitalize on the mistakes that were made. And they're sitting pretty with a two-round gap. The defense and clubhouse working well for them. They go back upstairs to the CC and the cash room. They've won it once, lost it once. How will they fare this time around? Changes in lineup. Bringing that double denial once again, which has... I mean, it, it, it would work well for them if a mission doesn't die. 
It's always a good strategy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you can keep your players alive, that's usually a good good way to start. A mission again, really fluctuating from hero to zero tonight. Demo, the villa popped off. Was it 16 kills, something like that? Yep. Oregon. Ah, I don't think there was anything significant to write home about. Maybe, maybe, maybe reach double digits. So far, we're five rounds in here to club. Four full rounds. I'll give him a little bit of credit, but two kills. It's half a kill around. Whereas Nico, on the other hand, very consistent. Yep. Oh. Can they make history repeat, Nemo? Uh, same bands as well. Actually, no, different band. Uh, oh, is it the same band? Same bands, actually. Yep, exact same band. Scout Tau Valk, Mav Mira. So no change there. Looks to be a bit of a different take. Uh, Bedroom hasn't been taken immediately. They've decided to opt for... Uh, getting that main breach open. Are we perhaps seeing more of a garage orientated take? It looks to be the case as we have somebody outside the main door that's usually used to cover off any uh, potential roam game. Uh, somebody trying to push in through uh, stock as well. Yeah, this looks as if it's going to be a garage take, Ollie. So a bit of a change up from the attacking side. I think that's welcome. Johnny's been proving a nuisance inside a garage on the catwalk, and it's given Nico a lot of room to maneuver as well. So I think this is probably a good idea, really, on the side of the nuisance to try and mix things up a little bit. Nico's going to make a pretty much full rotate all the way up main stairs now as he recognizes the pressure that's coming on in and doesn't want to get caught short. Instead, wants to be back up on site. Mowgli poised, ready to try and push on in. Potentially somebody playing at the top of cash stairs as well, but Johnny's doing a fantastic job of keeping control of Garage. He's got Skytee, who's joined in this time as well. Likely that nades are going to be tried to be used, but of course you've got the pesky Whamai discs. Mm -hmm. And of course Jaeger's ADS. It's not even going to matter because that ADS isn't going to stop bullets. Mowgli swings, finds Johnny. Skytee's still on up there, and Mission finds one in return on to TX as MF takes a great deal of damage, and another couple of kills fly in for these defenders. Despite a bit of a mix-up and a bit of a change of push, it's not worked for the attackers. The defuser's cold on the ground. Skyty, sure, he's sitting on no health, but he's still a threat. He's still inside a garage. Majestic doesn't dare push in because he knows the angle's being held. He does manage to land that one shot that was required. Does manage to take that garage control, but at what cost? 40 seconds left remaining. A two versus three. Still, still doable from these attackers. As the mission takes a good deal of damage, but is going to find the kill. Mowgli. He finds one onto Nico. Now in a one versus two with 30 seconds, but look, he can't get through the door. Oh, he can. He's going to prone all the way through, but it's going to put him in a tricky oh, situation. No. He's going to get caught. That's a <laughs> terrible place to be. I think he did destroy the deployable shield, but... At what cost? Uh, again, at what cost? It took a lot of his health away from him. Instead, now he's going to go through garage. Where the attack started is where the attack is going to end. He's going to try and open up the wall. As more toxic babe canisters come flying on through. That's the last one from Kazar. Pre-fire shots coming in as five seconds is all that stands in between this and around. <gasps> and he is going to do it. Mowgli coming on through. The defenders line up perfectly. Two kills in as many seconds. That was not a round we were expecting Lelucent to come away with. Nah, what, what are Dead Inside doing, man? There's no way you gave him that. At 20 demo. seconds to go... He was stuck in a wall, been smoked out, rotates round to garage, has five seconds left, and then you peek him. Why not run away? That's a tilter. What was... Oh. I... Uh... Oh, I like this. We're seeing some thermite. This is like the good old days. Thatcher Thermite Hibana. I haven't seen Thermite played in about a year. I'm excited. It's actually actually quite mad to see a Thermite, is it not? <laughs> or is that just me? No, it does feel different. It was different enough that I've noticed it. Honestly, I'm not mad about it. I think it could be what Lelouchons need here. 
I think you get way more value out of an ace. I think you get more value out of an ace, but I think that potentially for what the Lucians are trying to do, the Thermite could be better for them. I don't know, because the way I look at it is that you can't bandit trick an ace, but you can bandit trick a Thermite. Here's the way that I look at it. A mission's playing the bandit. You don't have to worry about the bandit as much as you usually would. So the mission <laughs> likes to find himself as that first death. You think that they're predicting him to die right off the rip? No, I think that there's, there's an, another advantage in that you get three flash grenades. Wamai's proven a little bit of a problem for them. I think that if they go in and do like a very typical take where they are going to open up the floor underneath uh, the, the uh, sorry the main east wall and look to try and get it open and remove the bandit from being able to peek there, it, it could work quite well for them. Whether that's what they try and do, you know, time will tell. It doesn't mm. look as though that's going to be the plan at the moment. I might know why they've maybe went for the Fermite, is whenever they've tried to push in for the bedroom and try and open up construction, they struggled with impact tricking. Yeah. Uh, and that's one disadvantage with the ace is that, yes, you can't bandit trick it, but whenever one of the holes gets opened up, it can then be impacted. Whereas Fermite, you don't have to worry about that. So there is, there's pros and cons. Uh, that's where every hard breacher is, of course, unique in, in many circumstances. So that's what you have to deal with, isn't it? What are you thinking of them not reinforcing the outside wall into construction? Uh, I don't think it's that much of an issue. Doesn't really give you that much, does it? It just seems so free, like, MF straight in there every single time, and construction control, it's not even something that's vied for. I know, but the dead inside weren't doing that anyway. They have went for the more, uh, like, garage approach, where they've set up a, a lot more towards that side of the map. Then yeah. this is where we come in and we talk about Johnny. He ha uh, has that long angle that he can hold right onto the breach, right onto the doorway. Uh, Sky on radio right now, he's going to be stuck there. Don't think he's going to get out. Never mind, he's been let go. Quite surprised that nobody's holding on to the angle. Uh, one thing about Sky e is that he knows that, hey, main wall is still reinforced. Nobody's there. I say that, I see a Thatcher and a Fermite start to rotate over. What's the a mission up combination. To? What's he doing down there? Where is a mission? He's down on the bottom stairs. He's, he's on the other side. He's in Strip. No, he's not Strip. He's in the bottom main stairs, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it was a, I mean, he's miles away. It's like yeah. Narnia. There he is. Look where Diffuser is. It's cold on the floor in bedroom. Why? Oh, never mind. There, there it is. Yeah, it's got it. Unfortunate. It's just so free. Well, this is shaping up to be a Lelucent's round as the kills start to fly. Two have been brought back though, even a three versus two, but Mowgli is in his favorite place. He's inside a cache and he's finding the same kills that we've seen him find before. Nico, bottom floor, trying to push his way up. Barbai is going to give him away. The diffuser has been confirmed. Pre-fire shots already headed in his direction. It's going to be a firefight if he even wants to get out of these stairs. Shots coming in from just about every conceivable angle and only a matter of time. The Lucents fighting each other for that final kill. TX will come out with it. And that's an equal 3-3 split on Clubhouse. Not what Dead Inside will have been looking for, but exactly what Lelousons will be happy to take at this point. Mowgli's in his prime right now, isn't he? Does he think yeah. 10 kills? Have to question a mission. What is he hoping to achieve downstairs? Like, realistically, what is he hoping to achieve? Not sure. Very, very strange. Well, that's the last round of that split. Now we go in to the next half, all square. And we head downstairs to the first bomb site for Lelousance. Lineups. Pretty similar. I think the only change is that uh, Skyty has opted for Sophia in their lineup, whereas we see more uh, Ash play from Mowgli. And other than that, pretty similar. Legion's there as well. Impacts, probably why you bring him. Yeah, everything else pretty pretty solid.
Interesting they're going downstairs first. Obviously looking to lock around in and gain that advantage and gain that, uh, that mental advantage as well. Let's see. Uh, let's see how dead inside approach this one. They've not. They're coming off not the best couple of rounds. Let's be honest. They've, that last round wasn't a great one for them. Round number five was a bit of a shocker. Oh, it's not how you want to start, is it? If you TX, getting slammed off main stairs window. So this will, this will be a pretty slow round, Ollie. It's just the way it is, mm. just in the basement. Uh, I think a mission, again, he, he'll be looking to get up close and personal, uh, as he usually does. Uh, he's the sledge, so maybe maybe we want to keep him alive, because he, he's pretty good for opening up that kitchen. A mission is going to be making a bit of an impact as he starts to destroy the floor above those main stairs. Interestingly, thatch is being used on bar hatch. Getting that open. I'm not sure why you would use a thatcher on that hatch. Any words of wisdom demo? Thatcher on the bar hatch with no cade in play? Or is it that they weren't expecting to come downstairs and they probably got EMPs to burn at this point because yeah. there's actually no mm. denial? Mm, that would probably just a precaution, pretty much. And you know, it's it's not too bad. I mean, you just kind of use it just in case there is some kind of kite tricking going on, and that does happen from time to time. Other than that, nothing too out of the ordinary. If this attack is starting to shape up, still a minute to go. Plenty of time uh, for obviously clubhouse basement, bloodbath basement, which gets uh, very very heated in the last. 10 seconds or so. That's whenever we start to see the fun begin. Bit of drone work now. We'll start to come in. Seeing the locations and positions. Sky team maybe looking to drop down towards blue. Hopefully uh, stuns himself. Majestic. He's the only man inside of armor. He's on box three right now. So that's trying to hold on and see where it goes. MF is in church alongside Mowgli. Three players in kitchen. Definitely going to be a kitchen drop, Ollie. This one's going to be fun. Mowgli leading the charge with the kill onto Nico. The defuser already starting to go down. Even man out of aura piece. Slaz stuck inside a dirt tunnel. Toxic babe can to come, but it is too late. Two kills going in favor of the attackers. And another two sees it a dead inside win. Dead inside doing exactly what the Lucens couldn't. And that is an effective kitchen hatch drop with a plant and sufficient cover in the post. Well, that was a great example of holding down your crossfires. That's perfectly played. Sending only one man down for the plant. Sometimes teams, you know, we've seen it before. I'm sure you've probably done it as well. One guy drops the kitchen hatch and he panic and everyone goes with him. They know their objective is to get that diffuser down. They know that that's what they want. They had every angle covered. They had a guy on the hatch holding dirt. They had the cross covered from the guy in main stairs. They had somebody uh, above the moto drop. So that means the guy in the main stairs will not get swung. Everything was covered. Everything. A risk assessment was formed. And they managed to find out what the issues could have been. And they put uh, an end to it. Really well done. What are the things in a risk assessment demo? Uh, God, that's... Go on. The only time I do a risk assessment was like science. And that science? was it. Yes. GCSE science. Why did you do a risk assessment? So if we were going to do an experiment, for example, let's say we were going to burn some stuff. All right. We're going to burn some stuff and see how much carbon's in it. We mm -hmm. would then have to do a risk assessment. So what could go wrong? For example, I would write uh, the bunts of burner could fall over and burn me. There's a risk. I could burn myself on the hot carbon. You know, just basically anything. My tie could catch on fire. So many things you could name, pretty much. Mm. That's all it is, the risk assessment. Which, in reality, is quite uh, like Siege. Whenever you think of an attacking strategy, you think, what could go wrong? It is. I think it'd be really fun to do, like, a risk assessment. <laughs> risk assessment for, for attacks, yeah. 
Yeah, you, you could genuinely risk assess it though. You could be like, right, this could happen, risks. this could happen, this could happen. This what, could happen. Are our, what are our precautionary mm -hmm. measures? Mm -hmm. How are we going to try and mitigate yep. this? And what are we going to do to make sure that it doesn't happen? You know, you know all those yep. things that you could just be like. Mm -hmm. You know, my risk assessment for my tie could catch on fire is brackets, don't wear a tie. <laughs> Simple take, solutions. Take your tie off. Yep, that's it. Don't peak Blackbeard. Yep, don't be an these idiot. Are the, the, these are like the same mm -hmm. levels of decision making. Exactly. I'm quite excited that we've not had to become Maverick Salesman this evening. <laughs> He's been banned. We've sold yeah, him, mate. I, I don't know about you, but I've I've sold out what? of Mavericks in the last few weeks in the run-up to Christmas. Really? We've been busy. Door-to-door? Mm -hmm. -door salesman? What salesman? A door-to-door -door salesman? <laughs> Just going door-to-door -door selling Maverick. Imagine being a door-to-door -door sales <laughs> salesman who sells... Who sells what? Who sells doors? Imagine being a door-to-door -door salesman who sells doors. Do you think that's a thing? Imagine you come along a house and there's no door. You'd be in business. You'd be in luck. I mean, that's what I feel like when a maverick salesman. It's just such a necessity. Ooh, Ooh MF. That is not a necessity. Knee capping. Nico finds a kill onto Mowgli. <laughs> Something you hate to see. What's he going for? Is he trying to eliminate the ABSs potentially for a nade? That could be what they've went for. Disables the gadget. That's exactly what they've went for. But can they follow up? Nobody with a nade is ready for it. So they've just wasted some some utility. That's all they've done. Look, ADS is back up and running. Hmm. Good idea. Didn't have the follow through. Not really sure where a mission was. Is it a little bit of a game of where's Wally sometimes with a mission? He's in garage right now. Oh, naded, it's gonna do the job. pushed out, caught in a trap. Skytey gets that kill, and now garage control. They have the breach open. Should be a simple plant, but Ollie, two defenders. What do they have? Uh, guns. No, the the, the explosions, the C4s. Toxic, toxic babe guys. No, <laughs> well, yeah, actually, to be fair, they have that as well. True. C4s on both TX and Majestic. Texas C4 is going to go to the grave with him. Like an ancient pharaoh buried with his belongings. Kazar looking to try and get that plant down as the Texas Babe isn't sufficient, but the C4 toss will be. Now it's looking pretty good for these defenders. Why peak? They're in a very dominant Why? position. Nico now looking to try and get the defuser down, but it's only a matter of time. The swing comes through from Majestic. Final two kills going in his favor. And the defenders making great use of not only the C4s, but also the Toxic Babes in those final few moments. Dead inside. <sighs> Another round just being dropped. An easy one at that. Breach open. They burned the C4. Great swing from Skytey to eliminate the smoke. But then he swings and looks for the bandit, where at that stage, all he had to do, Ollie, was just leave the breach and go back to the same angle, just holding the cross. Diffuser was going down. That's all it was. Really, really strange to see that happen. Big misplay. The risks had not been sufficiently assessed. Mm -hmm. Well, here we are in round number nine. All square, the same as the series count at the moment. Both teams have a map apiece. And it doesn't look as though it's going to be done anytime soon. With the way that it's going, Clubhouse is headed to an overtime. So we've currently seen noun rounds of Siege and there isn't anything to separate either team. I think consistency wise, the Lusons are probably edging it a little bit as we've got quite a lot of inconsistency on the side of Dead Inside. But players like Emission have started to wake up in the kills department a little bit. Vying for that top spot along with Nico and Skytey. Last time we saw them attack downstairs into Church and Arsenal, it was in fact successful. The kitchen hatch drop was the order of the day and it was pulled off without a hitch. Crossfires being covered, hatch being opened. And essentially no kills going on to the side of La Lusance. What are they going to do to make sure that that doesn't happen again? Still bringing the bandit demo for a, for a church in Arsenal? 
Yeah, that's a weird one. It's a strange one. Okay. MF Opal 1 and 8. He's had two rough games. The Villa as well was pretty bad for him. Uh, curious to see his stats because I don't think they're going to be pretty. A mission. On he goes. He's been, he's been all right. All right. Not too bad. A lot better on the attack than I think he was in the defense anyway. Kitchen floor getting opened. Mission making sure no one's in position to bandit trick. Uh, sorry, to impact trick onto that hatch. And I'm going to be looking to try and hold it, but it really isn't MF's day at all, as he's going to get taken down vertically. The mission finishing things off with the SMG, and that's a C4 that goes to the grave with him as well. Really not getting anything out of Bandit as an operator. Bandit batteries have been placed on triple wall, but that just hasn't been a focus from dead inside. From what we've seen, it's not really been a focus in the entirety of this map, if I'm being honest, regardless of who's on the attack. It really has been kitchen hatch the order of the day. Majestic really trying to thread the eye of a needle there, and will do so in terms of chip damage, but not in the all-important kill. Zara instead allowed to reposition, throw some utility down, and maybe take a little bit of a re-peek in a moment. Majestic's found an alternate angle. Pre-fire shots now. Oh, lovely one-tap there, but it isn't going to be enough to secure the kill. It is going to, however, <gasps> get it down. Oh, he does manage to find it. Onto somebody else. Onto a mission. Sniper. You've got to think that Majestic sat literally with his nose touching the monitor to be able to see the change mm -hmm. in pixel colours there and to be picking up those kills. But if he's going to do the business, levels things out at four men apiece. And that's going to be important when this drop comes through in around five seconds' time. Nico and Johnny both stacked up on the main stairs and they're going to try and potentially open up the triple wall. But Johnny doesn't have any ace charges. Still a Thatcher comes in. Now they're looking to push in towards Moto, knowing that Kitchen is a... Bit of a write-off, and here comes Slaz with a shotgun. Don't think they're making it through this wall. Nico has somehow found his way into blue, finds one and two, but can't find any more than that. La Lusant, say hold on. Majestic, a great round from him. A really important round from Majestic there, and that last kill onto Nico was crucial because things were looking a little bit sketchy in those dying few seconds dead inside. They had a plan. It didn't really work out all too well for them. But again, good positioning on the side of Nico. Just put them in a decent position to, to have a chance at taking that round. As it stands, it went to La Lusons. Five rounds to four. Majestic standing up and being counted. Slaz as well. Such an iconic position to play. The SAS shotgun in right on that vending machine facing Moto Door. So many kills. Thousands and thousands of kills been got in that same location. It just works. It's a synergy. Slash showing us just why it works in that previous round. Gym and bedroom is going to be where we head now as we enter round number 10. And this is an important round. It's unfortunate for the Lucens that it has fallen this way, that this is the round that they could convert into, into round number six, get themselves onto that match point. It's unfortunate because gym and bedroom is seen as tertiary. If dead inside are able to clutch this one out, then it gives them a little bit of breathing. Mm -hmm. It gives them yeah. a bit of an option to go, okay, we know we're going to be going to CCTV next. Let's try and pick that round up, and all of a sudden we can try and get a win. And this is it's an unfortunate way that it's fallen for the Lusons. And they really need to try and make the best of it at the moment and get themselves confirmed onto six rounds. Yeah, this is uh, it's a good rotation now, I think, for Lusans, but they need this win. Uh, like you said, uh, Ollie. If they don't, we go 5-5. Five, five. I'm kind of leaning towards dead inside at that stage. I really am. I think the the rounds of CCTV room, I mean, that, that, that round that they won where the diffuser uh, didn't get planted and, they, and the uh, planter got killed just down to time. It's, uh, it definitely, I think it was around that Dead, uh, Dead Inside should have won. So, yeah, I, I think this round is, is the pinnacle one. If Dead Inside take this, I think they take the map. But they need to take it. Uh, looking at this setup so far from Lulu Sense, they're going to extend all the way over towards the server as well. Which is a, it's an alright one. Trades come out already. Alda gets traded. A mission has managed to get 
slas in the meantime, so it's going to be a smoke for a sledge. Mm, all right, trade. Nade's gone. Smoke's gone. In terms of players, though, Emission might have 10 kills, but Slaz does find himself in important situations and usually clutching them out, so I think it's, uh, it's probably equal, if not leaning toward an advantage for Dead Inside at this moment in time. Ooh. A lot of construction control being gained as Nico looks to push through. Pre-firing as he goes. Mm -hmm. Just drive by. Land any damage. Mowgli, he wants these kills. He's fishing for them. Can he find anything? Oh. No. He's been eaten by a shark golly. Oh, no. It's like the, you know, the scenes where a fisherman goes out and all of a sudden, chump. Ah, that well-known phenomenon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> happens all the time. I hate it whenever I'm fishing and a shark bites my leg off. Hate it. <laughs> God. Such an inconvenience. Bit of a stalemate, in all honesty, at this point. Lelucent's not wanting to move. They do have an advantage at the time being, in that they are on the defense and they don't need to move, but man count advantage firmly on the side of dead inside. MF really thirsting after a kill on this drop as Majestic finds one onto Nico. That's a huge kill at this moment in time. 35 seconds or so left remaining. TX just finding a bit of a nook to sit in. As MF still playing for that hatch drop, recognizing he may be traded out here. Majestic going huge, finding another kill over onto Johnny. All of a sudden, the advantage is firmly with Lelousance. As MF comes up clutch, he finds the kill onto Kazar, and it's all down to Skyty. Poor old Skyty. He's going to get taken down. MF, he's not had the greatest game so far, but he's had a cracking round there when it matters. And he's going to lock Lelousance onto a match point. Yeah, a tough, tough game, tough series for MF, but... He shows up when he needs to, and a very important round win. Two round gap, they get a CC hold and the basement hold. Both, th these are bomb sites that they have won. I find it very difficult to see Dead Inside pull this one back. I really do, Ollie. It's a GG. It has to be, statistically. <laughs> You've got two rounds in two very exceptional positions in terms of operator band wise in terms of the way the momentum of the game's been flowing the statistics of how we're seeing these rounds break down it's looking good here for the to try and take this and i believe is the next map consulate uh yes it is we are confirmed for consulate Oof. let me see what we got for constant both these teams let me see uh, have I ever said played a consulate before? Okay, we have seen one consulate, and that was only from La Lusance, where they played against Homeless, and it was an 8 7. A bomb burner by all accounts. Mm hmm. I do like me some consulate. <clears throat> and that's about it to be honest. Everything I also else? think the game's going to get decided on the next map. Okay, so like a 3-1? Yeah, I feel like it's going to be a 3-1. See how it plays out. Now we look toward Dead Inside, and if they can pull it back, as they go on the attack for the CCTV room and cash, opening up that main breach seems to be their main go-to. They've done it very, very well last time. Very little hiccups. It was more the post plant, which is where they really suffered. Not even the post plant. Getting the plant down was where they suffered. The kitchen sink has been thrown at the east wall and it has been opened. We've just been able to bandit trick onto it and Johnny upside down on the rappel now could provide quite a nice angle. Mowgli looks keen for a run out. Skyty going to be there. I think Skyty recognised that that's been opened. Mowgli not going to go for it, recognizing that this is a match point situation, not wanting to throw his life away on an aggressive jump. Instead, both defenders downstairs, Mowgli and TX, are going to turn their attention toward Garage. It's going to be the next port of call here for Dead Inside to try and gain a little bit of a foothold. Looks as though that's going to be successful as drones flood in and the mission looks to maybe cook a nade. They know that someone's on the catwalk, but do they know that Mowgli's playing in between the bikes? 
Ooh, Majestic peeks out off the construction window and finds the mission. An MF on the Skytee. The Los Ants are looking to lock it out. Johnny has a limited MF. Even uses his last ace charge to open up uh, a run-in hole into that breach. TX eliminate another one. Now all of a sudden, dead inside, look as if they have lost this great attack that we've seen them go for. C4 gets tossed in TX. Turns on the dime and eliminates Nico. Lulusants. Another win for them. That is their second map in this series. 2-1 they lead. Clubhouse goes their favor. It does indeed. Lulusants come out on top. A nice 7-4 there for them on club. Majestic leading the charge. A real good spread of kills on both. At the end of Consulate. Which uh, is one of my personal favorite maps. I've got a lot of love for Consulate. I love playing it. I love casting it. It's a good map in the... If anyone's familiar with the UK massive scene, it's usually a good map for those guys. Let's see what the bands bring us. Bit of a Thatcher ban. Interesting. Thatcher was allowed over on club and banned out here. I'm anticipating... What are you anticipating, Dan? Are you anticipating the Maverick? Eh. For Consulate, probably not. There it is. Yep. Capital. Yeah, I don't think he's he's that big of a fun issue. I mean, hard breachers in general aren't that strong. I know that Maverick is a bit of like a, like a hybrid where he's a hard breacher and also like a denial operator. Um, but the only real time we, we see any kind of reinforcement work really be done is bottom floor and that's it is it worth banning uh, an operator for one bomb site probably not valkyrie of course an important ban here on consulate a lot of the map can be seen with only one or two outside valkyrie cameras it's not a big map very long map a lot of information to be had pulse usually a good alternative if you do want to start gathering that information maestro being banned out as well the alder and those cameras just proving a little bit too powerful nomad borderline necessity here on consulate even with the valkyrie ban you're still not going to want to fall victim to any of those cheeky defender runouts garage going to be where we're headed first Interesting, no Wamai being brought, although Wamai is available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, curious as to why they haven't went with Wamai and they've instead went with like a Legion, for example. Mm. I mean, impacts. I mean, do they need impacts? Impacts for what? Impact tricking? Probably not. Yeah, strange. Strange, Grant. Sorry, go on, Demo. Please I mean, continue. granted, the, the Legion, the gadget, it's very good for a bomb site that's pretty open with like a lot of different avenues that you can approach from. So, I mean, in terms of like the Goo Mine placement, it helps a lot um, to kind of cover up the backside. Backside pushes are an option. Very, very rare option, but still there. And sometimes the Legion can kind of help out with that. Interesting hard breach decisions as well being made. Johnny bring in the Thermite. Ace, of course, available. Mm. Ace does fall victim to the impacts as we impact tricking, as we've said before. But really putting all your eggs in one basket. It's not the most difficult wall to get open, let's be honest. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Nico seeing a bit of chip damage early on. It's bumpy. Cheeky little SP. Mm-hmm. Mowgli via mission. That that's the story, is it not? That's the battle that I'm sure we're gonna witness is an Ash versus the Jaeger. That is like Ash versus Jaeger is a battle as classic as Darth Vader versus Luke Skywalker. You know? It's that mm. kind of level. You know, Harry Potter versus Voldemort. Which one's you know? who's who? Who's who? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Who's winning? That's the question. 
We'll have to see at the end of the series which comes out on top. But even then, both Nico and Moglio have played both Ash and Jaeger, so it really, really won't get us any close to an answer. Mm. Moglio at the minute, he's on vending machine. He's looking to play quite aggressively onto those yellow stairs just managing to take some drones away and deny a little bit of intel the garage wall has of course been opened it is very easy to get open no denial being brought aside from the cade and that was dealt with very shortly now is the dance that the attackers dance they dance with the breach and they dance with the devil seeing if they can make a pick find anybody slaz's location's known here he's probably just waiting for a nade to the base but it isn't going to come as the mission hasn't got any nades left. Skyty instead is going to be the person that's looking to push on to him. So obviously Babe Canister arguably goes to waste there. The Skyty looking to just gather any information, see if anyone's at the top of Soda. Nobody is, so he knows he can push in if he needs to. Slaz has since pushed back a little bit. That has allowed Johnny to make his way on through. The Diffuser is now going to start to go down and well under the cover of Nico. As the push comes through, Skyty as well gets himself down yellow stairs and takes down that smoke. But a C4 toss swings and hits from TX, but it isn't going to be enough. The diffuser has been confirmed, and it is now majestic in the one versus four. A tricky situation to be in, and there's a question as to how that diffuser went down at all with that top floor control. Majestic got a glimpse, but is it going to be enough? It's not. Skyty, the person to find the last kill, is dead inside. Secure round number one with a great round, great execute, and a plant to boot. 4k for Skyty to kick things off. Uh, like you said, Ollie, surprising that the diffusers went down. I seen two distinct impact grenades above the breach where the diffuser went down. How has that been allowed to happen? I don't know. Um, yeah, I think Lulusits need to take a little look at themselves and think, uh, why aren't we stopping the breach? Why? Maybe info is what they need. I mean, Echo? Hello? He's, he's a thing. Echo does exist and is a thing. I would agree. Echo for the Legion? Something for the Legion. I don't know what it is that I've got against the Legion, but I'm just not I'm not feeling it. I'm not a fan. We go upstairs. Now. Kide for the top floors. Love strange. I wonder if we're going to say a yellow or an admin. Which is really the only two ways you can play this. It's either you come from admin and you try and tack in towards methane, or you go from yellow stairs and try and plant in towards console. Uh, differences between both. Yellow, much, much tougher in the early game. A lot of utility, but an easier plant. Admin, much easier time of securing it early, but a much more difficult plant. Pick your poison. Is Majestic going to let anybody get into the building or not? That's the question. The mission sees a large portion of his damage removed. Lucent is able to take in the map previously lost to Dead Inside, winning map three. Clubhouse seven to four. The times they be a changing. Lucent certainly on a bit of a resurgency. It's a must win map for Dead Inside if they do want to keep in it, so it makes sense that they're throwing everything at it. Lusants, they will have other opportunities to confirm the series, but this is going to be their first chance to walk away with the win. Ooh, the upside down repel. Is it going to yield results? You can see red silhouettes desperate to peek onto it, but nobody peeking as of yet. Mowgli going to go for it, but misses shots. Johnny's going to get taken out relatively early on. It's going to be the only hope of hard breach we have on the side of dead inside Mowgli playing quite aggressively here he's all the way inside of admin and Nico just swings straight onto his crosshair that is the importance of crosshair placement right there a mission lets Mowgli slip past him and what's potentially just cost it his team the round is now it's a two versus five and Mowgli just piles on the bodies and it's just down to a mission that's it just himself me myself and I and he himself has been taken out by... Oh, look! Look it is! That boy, Mowgli. Mowgli doing bits. Doesn't need Papa Bear, does he? It's not Papa Bear. Is it not Papa Bear? Oh, it's Baloo. It's Baloo. Yeah, but he calls him Papa Bear. Does he? Yes. I've not seen Jungle Book in years. He definitely does. 
Mm. I'll take your word for it, Demo. Mm -hmm. Cafeteria and garage being attempted again, as that's where Lelousance lost round number one. Bit of a change in the lineup here, as Johnny's going to go for the ace this time. Could give a bit more opportunity to impact trick, but it, it really does all depend. The only thing that I hope this time is that there's not holes in the floor, or in the ceiling, should I say, directly above where the plant's going down and Majestic sitting upstairs, because that was a little bit of a misplay. I'm not sure when the holes were created. I'm not sure if they created them after the plant had gone down or not, but it was just a bit of a misplay. You should have known that people were flooding through the breach. There's the Kaid being brought for the basement. Good pick up. Patcher ban as well. It means that teams have to work to get rid of that Electro Claw. Two in multiple ways. Um, depends where it is. Depends where the Electro Claw is placed. That's the big uh, decider. In terms of how you want to go for it. Sometimes you can try and maybe get it through the drone hole with a nade. Uh, most of the time teams just go above anyway. Uh, which seems to be what they're setting up for. Uh, a lot more of them are looking in towards that piano side. Uh, a mission. He spawned over there. Uh, Majestic. He's by himself. He... I think he played a big part as to why the Diffuser got planted. He needs to make sure that he can open up those holes and kind of put a stop to that. I'm surprised why he hasn't just opened up above the breach, like right now. Because, I mean, you may be thinking, oh, but maybe he's trying to be, uh, be sneaky and keep it a secret that he's above. I mean, if he impacts above, it means that they have to come upstairs and that wastes time and utility, which is probably what you want at this stage. Yeah, and with all the windows prepped, it's no secret that that's where he's going to be playing. Looks like the wall's going to start to be open now as a mission's going to be spotting out a bit of utility with the Z-Ping. The wall now open, but I think that was just for the for the Banshee. Potentially not for the other Electra Claw, although that does look as though that's been gotten rid of now. MF looking to challenge onto this breach. The question is, has Majestic opened the holes above yet or not? It doesn't seem as though he has. Wall's now going to start to be open, so there's plenty of options, and another reaching round going to fly on through. There are some small holes in the floor, but nothing really significant. Maybe something enough to work with. Majestic no impact grenades left. I wonder if they have been used. Sun's now coming into him in piano, as it looks as though one of the attackers is trying to root him out. That attacker's going to be Kazar. There's the Nomad just looking to try and lock off those flanks and make it difficult for him to rotate back down. Getting himself onto the upside down repel. Skyty going to take a huge portion of damage as well. There's a lot of pressure coming into MF here as 50 seconds ticks by. He's going to find one kill, but is it going to be enough? Kills do fly back and forward. The swing this time does work from Slaz, but the diffuser's going down. Where's the intel? Johnny, he is getting away with murder here. The diffuser will be confirmed, but it is going to be too little too late. Surely he finds one. Can he find the second? No, Slaz by the skin of his mm -hmm. teeth. How many times has that person got the last kill in the round? I have lost count at this point. It's going to be round confirmed for Lusance. Bit of a sloppy one by all accounts. That was a very good round from La Lusance. Great retake. They just polished everything that went wrong. Which is good to see. Very, very good to see. Um... I am interested into why we're not seeing all too much, like, soft destruction from above. Because, I mean, I look at Garage and I think multitudes of soft destruction in Piano and Antichamber. Why not utilize that? These are the questions, Demo. It is interesting to see attackers not investing heavily into that top floor and to try to take control and open up those angles. The common angles as well, pipes. Slaz has played there every single round. Back of White Van, back of Pillar. You know, MF played Pillar pretty much for, what, two minutes? Two minutes 30 in that last round? That locations that are very easily dealt with. You bring in a sledge, Nico's on the sledge. You can open up that entire floor in piano if you wish. 
it, it really does start to beg the question as to why that isn't an approach that you're going for, particularly when you bring in a nomad because you can confirm flanks and you can lock them off. You can flank, uh, you know, sorry, you can flank watch onto blue spiral. You can you can get an air job onto onto the top of yellow. There's, mm -hmm. there's ways and means of doing these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead, we're seeing very horizontal, very lateral pushes coming in from the attack, and it worked for them in round number one. Should it have done? Potentially not. It didn't work for them in round number three. How many times is Dead Inside going to be able to, you know, get away with it mm -hmm. and it, it to work out for them? I think we're going to start getting unstuck if they continue in that way when attacking onto that side. But, of course, we're changing things up now. Mid-floor. Pulse. Love Pulse and Consulate. Great operator. Can see literally every floor from, like, one position. Like, he can see up anyone going to admin as he's spotted out. So they now have the information that they're looking for an admin entrance. Uh, Mowgli seems to be... Yeah, Mowgli and Slaz. There's actually one in yellow. So they have spread out right across the top four. They went for a 2-3 split. Usually it's a 3-2 split with uh, three guys in the mid floor. Uh, but no, they've went full whammy and Mowgli. He killed Mako in the exact same fashion again. Mowgli really getting away with bloody murder there as... A mission this time gonna shut him down, but Sheer cat. again at the cost there of Nico. It it's a large price to pay. For your sledge as well, you're gonna be looking to the sledge for a lot of that soft destruction. You know, I've got three breaching charges on the ash, but it puts a lot to do on one person. Placing the breaching charge is a slower process than swinging the sledgehammer a couple of times. Worth highlighting as well that Nico, despite his standout performances in the first three maps, currently sitting at round number four and he's only got one kill. I think by round number two in Clubhouse, he had four, so really struggling to get himself established into this map, and this is really when his team needs him the most. Mission burns through an ADS, and almost does a little bit of chip damage to Slash, but he's still alive, and has to be careful if somebody is on his window. Majestic actually downstairs, maybe looking for the run out onto the man in the balcony, and he, he gets it. skydy has gone. Now it's a three versus four. That's a bit of a worry, because Slash can go unchecked. He doesn't have to worry about the balcony. A mission look at the pressure down towards the long desk. Careful of Spiral, as he knows that there's one below, and he's correct to be wary of that, as MF is now holding on to Spiral. Another one goes onto the balcony. Johnny eliminates TX. Now it's a three versus three into a two versus three. Slash is gone. MF, he's below. Has a C4 in pocket as well, so him as a pulse could get a very easy kill onto the diffuser. Majestic, he needs to try and stay alive as long as he can. It's flipped and flopped, and now we are in an unfavorable position for these defenders. The swing going to come through here as kill's going to go in either direction. Majestic finds a mission, but Johnny, he's able to take down MF. Johnny and Kassar now are all that stands in between. As one down is achieved, Majestic does secure the down. He's going to be able to make a rotation. The plant has to go down now as Johnny is left with no other option. Majestic needs to move. He needs to make his play. The diffuser has now been confirmed and Majestic's now got a re-challenge onto this. Is he going to be able to find the kill? Pre-fire shots go through, but no. He doesn't have the intel to work with and Johnny comes in clutch. Johnny, another plant to his name and another finishing kill. Really keeping dead inside into this one. Yeah, I... I, I definitely think that Pulse wasted the opportunity. Challenging uh, onto the guys trying to push in towards the spiral. I mean, at that stage, I would look to try and play the C4 from below and get it up through the hatches. Did you think about where that plant spot was? Pulse, up through the hatch, kill. If you're going to bring the Pulse, get value out of him. Especially at that point where the diffuser has to go down, mm -hmm. because if they're, they're either going to chase you and they're going to lose the round, or they plant the diffuser and they're going to try and win, you, you've got to do something other than just swing through smoke and, and get taken down. Even if you'd have gone for a full rotate up yellow stairs, like, you know, thrown the C4, swung it and missed, then gone up yellow stairs and just tried to make something happen. It, instead, it does seem a little bit crazy to swing on two people. Mm -hmm. Dead inside catching up. Two rounds apiece now. Upstairs to the top floor we go. Mowgli ran roughshod over an admin side last time we saw this objective. There's an admin push was attempted, but it really didn't come to all too much for the attackers. 
I'd be interested to see if they stick with that or if they go instead for a bit more of a yellow take. With the way that the drones are shaping up, it looks as though they're going to be shaping up for an admin side push. MF potentially looking to gather some intel early on into the round. Going to be going. Yeah, I think admin. Just looking at it, and... Sledge and Ash, both on yeah. that side, and they naturally be rotated over towards the yellow to burn up utility. Yeah, I think it's safe to say we're probably going to see an admin take. Nico could find a kill here if he plays his cards right. Majestic, really exposed there. Just managed to nip away with his life. Obviously, the timing just not quite lining up for Nico the way that he wanted it to. The drone work going on inside a CEO as well. As could be a bit more of a split push. Johnny going to be there with the diffuser. Sky to going to be looking to join him as well. Nico's joining the party. Maybe a bit of a change up as three, four attackers now shaping up around this yellow area. Have they got the utility to get through a yellow stairs push? That's the big question here. Uh, I think they do. They have nades, flashbang, smokes as well. They can burn for it, even using the ash and the Sophia. You know, they have a ton of utility. But they're a little bit all over the show, and a mission just tries to walk up. Granted, he manages to get the kill on the Slavs, but he has been down now as Majestic. He comes up yellow. Nobody's holding him. That should be an easy kill. No! Actually, he trades another trade, but it results in a down. Two players on the opposite team downed on the staircase. Not anymore, though, as Majestic has been finished off, and MF, the last man up, they've swung in now, and they're gonna stick the diffuser. Get the free kill. Come on, Johnny. There it is. That's, that's a down player. That's still a minute to go. Diffuser been planted. MF, he's all over the show. Questionable stuff there. I think MF could have done something to try and deny the plant from going down there. He had the angle open that you can see on your screen there, just at the eye level on the stairs. Instead, maybe you're going to look for a bit of a run out, but of course, the air job's protecting that as well. Only a matter of time, really, until Dead Inside confirmed this round. Questions that need to be answered. Johnny ran a number on the entire Lelousant squad from that console repel, getting two kills and being able to then fly in and get the diffuser down as well. It really looked as though Lelousants weren't prepared at all for that admin, sorry, for that CEO side push. So, three, two, dead inside. Bit of a hectic round. And they'll take that. I'm trying to think, what's like a good split for console at these days? Because I know it used to be defense would be more likely to get like a 4-2. It's more defender sided. But I don't know anymore. I mean, at this point, I think the Lusons are going to be happy with a 3-3. We'll have to yeah. see how this yeah. round plays out. Dead inside, they haven't attacked this the best way so far. They've really not attacked strongly down onto Garage. We've seen them win one, lose one. There's a chance here that they're going to be able to make something happen. I'd, I'd like to see them take a bit more of that top stairs. Uh, sorry, upstairs control. Honestly. I'd like to see them play in a little bit more inside a piano. So how are they going to set up for the basement? Again, Majestic on the Legion. Really clinging to this operator, Mowgli. Looking for those SPs once again. At this stage, has to be in consideration for MVP at the series. Has to be. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Consistently performing as well, I think. We've seen Nico putting up some good numbers consistently, but still, we're at round number six now, and he's still only got one kill. They are great numbers. Uh, Mowgli getting himself in and amongst the action as much as possible. Pretty much a kill around. Ooh, a mission. Again, someone that's struggling here on Consulate. And mm -hmm. if a mission's struggling and Nico's struggling, it ain't looking great for Dead Inside. I know that Johnny's stepping up a little bit this game, but it really doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Why is he stepping up? He's a Fermite. 
his job is to plant, which he has done that four times this game so far, Ollie, which is an incredible number. He's planted four times in five rounds. It's good going. Last round, he got two kills Ooh. as well, so really putting up the numbers. Skyty, dancing with death at the bottom of those yellow stairs. The breach has been open now, so it's time really to start thinking about pushing on through. Has Majestic got the vertical holes? This time has he opened them with the impact? That's a big question. MF, another kill from the back of Pillar. This is why you need to clear out that top floor control. MF's going huge here, finding yet another. Nico finally going to shut him down, but at what cost? Four versus two, a minute and 15 left. There are vertical holes now as well. As Majestic is playing them, this has got to be locked in for the loose ons at this point, Demo. Yeah, little sense. They've taken a very strong standpoint. Bit of aggression in there. Majestic finally making these vertical holes work for him. Nico has responded though with the kill onto Mowgli, but 1v3, diffuser cold, smokes. Shutting him down. Heads over towards yellow now, and at this stage, he's just looking to play for the kills to see for Rip. Is it going to be tossed out by TX as yellow comes in? And there goes a multitude of gadgets popping off. Barbed wire, Banshee, Goomine, and a shotgun to send him home. It's a hell of a cocktail there. Three rounds apiece after the first split. Arguably for the Lusant, not really what they were looking for. I think they would have been more happy with maybe a 4-2 there. There was certainly one round that, that could have gone their way. As it stands, it's an even playing field. And Dead Inside are going to be pretty happy with that. Moving now on to the defence. It's their chance to try and streak a little bit of a lead here and to keep themselves in this series. Realistically, there's only four rounds now that stand between Lelousant and winning here in this grand final tonight. I'm sure Dead Inside will have something to say about that, though. 3-3. Three, three. We've been here before. Another 3-3 free, free split. One thing about these games today is they have been 7-3, seven, 7-4s. Seven, no 7-5s. I haven't even got that close. I wonder if this one's going to be the game changer. Will it be the OT map? Haven't went to OT as of yet. We've not actually, have we? We've not really seen close maps, though. What did you say? Mm -hmm. Seven, what was it? Seven, four, seven, seven, three, seven, seven, four, seven, three, seven, four. Seven, four, yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not close games, you know. Seven, five, seven, six. They're, they're close, but clinical from the team who won it. Yeah. Like, they deserve to win it. It's not like an OT where, oh, it could have went that way, could have went this way, could have, you know, all that. It's like, we know who won the map. Clear as day. Basement. First up for Dead Inside, and they're going to go for a bathroom hold. Usually done with Mira. No Mira on the side. So, essentially, Sky is going to be here as just like a standalone player. He's not going to be leaving anytime soon. Wait, have they opened up the hatch for him? I think they might have. Uh, looks as if they have. Uh, but he's just going to be here to waste time and get kills and get utility. That's all it is. Plants versus zombies. Great game. Dead inside plants four out of their six attacking rounds. Will the loose ones have similar numbers or play for frags? Time will tell. I think Nico's going to be pretty happy with that. Seems to be loving life on the Jaeger already within the first minute of the round behind the kill on to mf it, let's be honest we've given a bit of a hard time to you tonight it isn't sitting too badly at five and six but getting first blooded like that isn't really what you want to be doing i think we can now turn our attention to tx who's one and three although he isn't dying a great deal of time he also isn't getting that many kills that isn't of course the full story much different hold here coming out from dead inside they're choosing instead to hold on to bathroom. Moly, being allowed to play that. There is a player playing inside a bathroom. Yep, don't know how he's got away with that why one. Why is Kazar not challenging onto that? Deployable shield placed the wrong way as well. Going to get destroyed pretty much straight away. Skyty, we've seen you play better than this. You need to play aggressively onto Moly. Mm -hmm. He's playing timid right now. Doesn't want to move. I mean, granted, part of the wall and bathroom, I think, is open. So he has to watch himself and the drone bait comes out. He's lucky to be alive. But no, Majestic gets him in the end. There's a smoke trying to peek through the holes of anti-chamber. 
And the hatch is open and it works against them. A mission has been eliminated. Nico looking for a rotate and he himself gets taken out. One player left, it's a smoke. He's stuck on yellow pillar right beside the hatch. 1v4, Lelusant. This is looking like an easy one. And Majestic drops down like an assassin and eliminates him. Lelusant, a great way to kick things off. It's almost Assassin's Creed style there from mm -hmm. Majestic as he drops the hatch and swings onto the back of White Van. What a round from Lelusant as well. A clinical take and just emphasizing how important it is to take control of that top floor. And it's crazy to think that we've seen so much investment from Dead Inside on that top floor. They played a mute up there. They had a deployable shield. There's somebody playing inside of Ants Chamber. Uh, sorry, there's someone playing inside a bathroom. Yet on their attacking rounds, they didn't touch piano or any of that area at all. But on defense, they're more than happy to play it. And the loose ones are more than happy to take it. So... That round not working out. A couple of missteps. Skytee have to put question marks around his head. I mean, if he's playing there, you have to try and give the cover. The whole reason why you're there, uh, Ollie, is to stop people trying to have control of the vertical game. He's just allowed them to have it, you know? I'm playing with the hatch open quite early as well, not keeping it closed and then opening it as you're looking to drop. Yeah. Questions with really do need to be answered questions that maybe get answered in this round is dead inside are going to give it another bite of the cherry downstairs in garage they must know what where they went wrong because they wouldn't go here otherwise it wasn't like a case of oh i won this gunfight they got slammed so they must know what went wrong i mean nico got open in blood as well really wasn't around for dead inside at all he got this time maybe over in visas. So MF could get a rotation kill there, but yeah, it just insane. doesn't hold it for long enough. I think Nico knows the windows are open, though. Obviously, that sledgehammer makes a lot of noise, so I think he's aware. Flashbang getting tossed in. He knows one's lurking outside of the balcony. Maybe that gives a distraction for MF to start walking up and trying to find some kills. The mission is supporting Nico, and he just gets wallbanged just straight up, and MF swoops in, steals the kill. Matt has left the mission all by himself. He's over towards the yellow stairs, holding on. Granted, has an easy rotate, but oh, he himself goodness. is going to stay to die. Majestic finds another. Three versus five, and dead inside. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. So dead inside, have gone, okay, we know what went wrong. We lost control of piano too early. We'll keep control of upstairs this time. And then they have proceeded to just lose control of upstairs in around a minute. Skyty this time has found a kill onto Mowgli. I'm looking to challenge a bit more firmly inside of this bathroom area. It's playing tight up against the deployable shield this time. Mowgli going down, of course, removes one way of getting rid of that shield. The other way, of course, being a nade, which is fly in yep. from mm -hmm. MF. Nicely done from above as well. I was maybe suggesting that Zafir gets in on the action, but it isn't going to be required. Majestic, looking to just hold on. He doesn't need to peek player inside a bathroom, but he knows that the player is going to be there. Oh, almost gets baited out, switches at the wrong moment. Shotgun at close range is devastating, oh. and that isn't a challenge that you want to be taking. Skyty this time, making bathroom work a little bit better, especially if these attackers go one by one. MF may be looking to join in on the action now, but the shotgun is still primed and ready. Smoke from below, trying to hold on to those anti-chamber holes that are there, ready for him to try and give support to Skyty, who is still alive and well, and MF pushes in, gets shot, of course, from below, and then also gets eliminated by the man in the stalls, who then gets drive-by as TX is in the bonsai, pulls out the pistol, cannot connect the shots onto the smoke, Whoa. and gets turned around. Johnny's there to save his teammate's life. Slaz in a 1v2 now. Skyty, he ain't getting picked up. Slaz has 15 seconds. He has the diffuser, but I think he's gonna have to go for the kills. Tries a wall bang. But Smoke is on his belly, pushes through default cam, gives the info, Johnny tags him up. Slaz looks towards Johnny, he finds Johnny, knows where the Smoke is, has to secure it, but no! Kazar is there, dead inside, they hold on. I had my head in my hands from the moment that I saw TX storming sight with a pistol. 
what a round from La Luzons. What a better round from Dead Inside. Holding on. And as you said, Demo, correcting their mistakes. They knew what they did wrong and they knew what they needed to do better. And they did just exactly that. All square at four rounds apiece. This seriously could be uh, be an overtime map. And I have, if Dead Inside win this, I hate to think who's going to take the series on Cafe. And Cafe is, is a mental map. Absolutely bonkers. Mid floor, Mira comes out to play. Strange that they're taking a Mira to hold bathroom, but they didn't take a Mira to hold the bathroom previously. For the uh, for the garage. Yeah, different. Uh, I don't know. Different lineups. Different. Different things required, I guess. They've not got the smoke this time, have they? I think that's the switch around that they've made. Sky T is going to be playing on the pulse this time. Kazar on the mute instead of the smoke, and then Johnny picking up the slack on the mirror. Mowgli's quietened off a little bit as he looks to drone his way into admin. Had some pop off games so far in this series, and isn't expected to be at six kills at round number nine. All that can change, of course, in the blink of an eye. You know what's crazy, Demo? I just remembered. MF was the player that got the ace inside of Oregon as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sky is on the pulse. Let's see if he can get any good value from this. Obviously, we had uh, seen previously the pulse pick and it just just didn't work for them you know wasted opportunities uh tx opens up with the first kill that's a sneaky one doesn't work all the time but if you manage to catch somebody out by surprise it's a freebie a mission is down get a mission a mission and nico having really rough maps uh, on consulate and it may look as if it's costing their team right now ollie nico died every single round nine deaths a mission died all but one like that, there's not what you're expecting of those two players and it's crazy to think that we're still level at four rounds apiece like if, if either one of those was putting a little bit more of a shift in this could be easily easily could be a dead inside map as it stands it's really hanging in the balance at the moment and it's going to be about which team and which players can shake off that sort of lackluster performance if Lelusons can get a bit more out of TX then all of a sudden, it starts to look really difficult if you're on the side of Dead Inside. Speaking of TX, he's going to claim all Zulu window. But damn, what's going on? The diffuser is going down. It's being confirmed. Slash Sneaky. is being given a free ride. Oh, oh the C4 is going to be ripped and it's going to hit. Slaz gets taken down by Johnny. Bizarre and Johnny last two alive. Mowgli now has picked up that diffuser and looks to be the cannon fodder. But MF from above provides the cover. Diffuser now going to get confirmed as Kazar isn't in a position to deny it this time. And this is one of the hardest retakes in all of Siege. Majestic. And he's going to find the last kill, and poor old Kazar isn't even going to get to the big old daunting double door. Great round from Lelusance. And again, a mission, another opening death. Can't wait to see the stats, because I think he has died a lot more times than he's been able to get the opening kill. Only 5-4 at this stage. Who do we think? Who's going to win? The viewers. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you the same question again. I'm going to forget you said that. All right. So Ollie, who do you think is going to win? The viewers. Is that not the answer? Joke, man. Do the viewers Absolute not win joke. for getting to watch such a fantastic, fantastic display of siege? No, I want hard facts. Who's going to win? Um... I don't know, man. SI is going to be a tough one this year. Oh, you mean who's going to win 
the EU Season 5 CCS you, Grand Finals. You have failed me. I think Lelousons are going to win it. They're at that all important point now. Question, will they win it on map 5? No, I think they win it here and now. Win it map 4, okay. I, th I think they win it here and now. And I say that because Dead Inside are getting themselves in a very sticky situation right now. 5 to 4. One round away from the Lusons confirming a match point. Two rounds away from the Lusons taking the whole thing. It's a huge game. Caster's Curse. Never asked our caster for a prediction. Doesn't it exist. doesn't end well. Just that doesn't exist. It's That's not a thing. Myth. That's Honestly, a myth. it's nothing. It's a myth. You can clip this now. Mm -hmm. Me saying that it is not a thing. Mm -hmm. And you can replay it at the end. Yep. So, Pulse, Pulse is here again. And... I mean, the value from, from these teams taking the pulse just ain't working. They're going for mid-floor. Keep in mind, they can go somewhere else. But they've opt for it again. Probably because the way the kills happened. I mean, uh, TX getting a kill from a spiral window onto somebody rotating back is a bit of a stinker kill to kind of be dealt with so maybe they're gonna have another go and hopefully that doesn't happen it's like you know one of those where you know if this didn't happen then we would have had a good chance let's try it again let's make sure you don't die from this and away we go until to get an eaten up there as a mission is looking to challenge from desk Mowgli arguably in a better position to do so as he's going to be able to remove one of the goyo shields TX can find again. a huge opener on to Nico. that could be massive in this round Certainly going to do a lot for the mental. Nico confirmed dying every single round here. Played the swing from Mowgli onto Gazar. And is he going to follow it up with yet another? There's all the chance that he will. Manages to destroy a bit of utility on his way. And a mission forced to rotate down yellow. Now they have the upstairs control. A C4 has been tossed out by the mirror. And MF can start trying to open up above said mirror and an attempt to eliminate Johnny, who then starts challenging these holes. So I think Johnny's really hungry for the kill. He knows he needs something back, but he himself would be eliminated by Slaz on the front door. Skytee is below, but I think he needs to go and give a mission some help. With a minute to go, Mowgli's going to walk in and does not know that, that there's a Goyo lurking. Now he does as Goyo is... Let rip that vector. Has a mirror window to play behind as well. Skyty has eliminated TX. Mowgli nearly gets naded by his own teammate. Slaz has eliminated Skyty. And MF onto the final kill of this round. La Lucent. Map point. Series point. Championship point. One round now stands between La Lucent and the lion's share of the prize pool, which is 2,000 US dollars. A fantastic prize pool put on here by CCS. Made possible, of course, by our sponsors, Tabstats. Anybody that knows of Tabstats, get yourself on there. Tabstats.com, you're able to check your stats. And, of course, your opponent's stats as mm -hmm. well. It's the sharp end now, Demo. Six rounds to four. A bit of a mountain for Dead Inside to climb. Garage and cafeteria is going to be where they choose their fate here we go this is gonna be a bit of a madness this is the potential final round for both of these teams, and they're going to have to give it all. Lusant, they have the clarity of knowing that if we lose this round, we still have another chance. There is no safety net for Dead Inside. If they put one foot wrong in this round, they will be punished and they will lose. That's it. They have to play perfect from here on in. Or hope that Lusant has the biggest choke. The next two minutes and 50 seconds will decide which one of those it will be. Question on my lips, is Nico going to die this round? Is he going to go 11 for 11 I know we've been ragging on him, but this is the game that you've got to step up. This is the map that you have to stand up and be counted. He had a cracking map on Clubhouse. He had a cracking map on Villa. And has really fallen off here on Consulate when his team need him the most. A mission as well. What happened to the duo? What happened to the 30-kill duo? that we saw on Villa. It now no longer is a thing. 
And instead, Majestic is taking over the mantle of Top Fragger in this map. And MF has really set things up. MF trying to get some of the flight protection done, but a mission peaks the holes. A crazy play from him, but it's worked for them. Nico as well has just rotated up spiral, and now he's in towards the circle desk, towards the front door, and he knows he has Skyy beside him. Has been droned out, Nico. Don't panic. Don't worry. Air jab will be placed, and now swings, but gets eliminated. Majestic. He's had a great game so far, and he adds even more so. So at this stage, I, I think that they may be playing around the mute. They know that Skyty ain't moving from his position, and they may be just looking to leave him alone and just start working on anything they can. It's not a bad strategy because we've seen what Skyty can do inside of this bathroom area. The question is, what are they going to be able to achieve? We've got Mowgli and TX inside a piano. At this point, they're arguably saying, throw a C4 at me. And we can see that Malus is underneath and Mission is going to be in that position. Mission does have a C4 in hand, so it is a possibility. All the while, SkyT is eating up so much time in this bathroom area. We're into the final minute now. Main breach getting opened. It's going to force eyes to be averted for the time being. Bathroom now open. Mowgli, is he going to take this just as a head-to-head -head gunfight? Oh, he's going to take it and he's going to lose it. A mission from downstairs through the hatch over onto Mowgli. That's a huge loss at this point and a mission standing up and being counted when it matters. Skyty comes in as well with a nice kill over onto Majestic. The bathroom hold is paying dividends this round. Slaz and TX, they've got 25 seconds and four bodies to find. A mission is going to find his third body of the round, and that is going to be onto Slaz. And TX has it all to do. A C4 flies past his head. He almost falls down the hatch in the process. Had the option to revive, of course, as the defeat is a fear, but in the one versus four, it was never going to happen. Sky T and the bathroom really making it work when it matters. A mission as well. Uh, didn't really know where he went for these past two maps, but that's a big round where he needed to step up, and he did so. But that means the basement, which has worked out for them in the past, Ollie, it's locked out. And now we see a top floor. Um, top floor, top floor, top floor. What are they going to do differently? What are they going to try and change up? Mira from Johnny. How's the Mira going to work? Never mind. There's an echo. Talked about an echo. Maybe not the greatest operator for top floor. Mostly because I think of top floor and I think that you're never safe in top floor. Uh, there's always an angle you can get killed from. No matter where you sit, you, there's always a possibility of you dying. It's not like the garage where you can sit in uh, in security and you know you're not going to die and you can use the echo drones. Here, I don't think, like, where are you going to get a chance to use the echo drones? You know, well, because you can't sit anywhere without being killed in this map. Or not, not, not in this map, but in this bombsite. I just don't think that the Echo plays into a Lusance's play style either. We've seen plants go down, but it varies who gets the plant down. It's very situational. It's if it needs to happen, it will happen. It isn't necessarily set out as an objective from the start of the round. And I'm not sure that the Echo is going to provide... I, I don't know. It depends. If, if the Echo drones provide that information, then yeah, sure. But we all know now that Echo drones are a lot more visible than they used to be. Th there's definitely a question there as to as to who you would bring instead. Obviously, we're not seeing the uh, the Legion being brought this time on the side of Dead Inside, which I guess the Echo is a is a worthy substitute. You still get the impact grenades. Is it going to be a difference maker? We're setting up for a big admin side push here from the Lusons. Admin is the name of the game. Mowgli straight into Admin. Fears nothing. He has to be careful. He knows that either Nico or Emission are always waiting. What was that from? Was that Sledge? Was that MF just opened it up? Yeah, I think I he was, did. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was like a C4 it. or something. I was like, you're lucky, but uh, no. Just the way we've seen it from our perspective. Uh, that gives the hatch open. Uh, guessing for flight coverage is probably why that's there. TX, look where he's at. He's over in a spiral windows. He loves it. So you can get a direct line of sight onto somebody playing connector, which can be very, very strong. Look where Johnny is. 
He's on his Echo Drones, but what did I tell you, Ollie? All it takes is one guy going over to the console windows and he's dead. Trying to find some vertical angles there as MF looking to make a splash inside of theatre. The halfway point in the round, and a very important round at that. The Lusons, they want to lock it off here and now. If they do so, they'll be crowned our champions. Dead inside, they want to take this to a match point. They want to take this to an overtime, and they want to take this to another map. Nico underneath. Does he know that someone's prone? I think he's seen the barrel of the gun. Is he going to get a chance? He's swinging and swinging and swinging, and yes, he is. An easy freebie there onto Mowgli. Skyty finding one as well as the kills level out and an equal three apiece. Both teams very tentative in what could be the last round of this game. Johnny with a bullet hole eliminates TX and it looks as if we may be headed to overtime unless MF and Slaz can pull off this clutch. Creeping up in towards long desk. MF will wait for anyone. These bullet holes, Johnny, gonna be on them again. See somebody just dropped the shoulder and hits the headshot. Nico onto the other one. Overtime is on the cards. Here we go. There really is no other way I'd rather see this end than in an overtime or potentially yet another map. But it's going to be an overtime for now as dead inside they claw their way back. We didn't think it was possible. A couple of players on the side of dead inside have had a bit of a stinker of a game. Things really not working out in their favor, falling on the wrong side of Lady Luck every single time. But somehow, they have managed to get themselves to this point. They've managed to get themselves to the overtime. Six rounds apiece. It's going to be on dead inside to start off on the defense. So they're starting off on the side that they had previously played. Laluson looking to make something happen here. We've seen very, very good comprehensive holds of the bathroom when attacking onto the... Oh, sorry, when dead inside have been defending onto this bomb site. Consular is a Lusant's map. And with the way that things have been going so far tonight, Demo, we've almost seen a bit of a flip-flop. And the team whose map pick it was, it was the other team that won it. Ooh. How are we going to play this one out? Defense goes inside. Off dead inside. Um, it's been 3-3 free -free on each split, so... I mean, there's no real tell as to who actually gets favored in the defense and the attack. Uh, I mean, the fact that we're seeing the, the, the downstairs instantly come in for dead inside, that has to prove well for them. Uh, one adaptation that I would definitely recommend that we see from Lalosant is dealing with Skyty inside a bathroom. Just open up the reinforced wall. That's all you have to do. Yeah, open up the reinforced wall, get your Zofias in. Get your stun grenades in and really just work it and, and take it as a, a problem that needs to be solved. There's not as much of a top floor presence as we've previously seen. Often we've seen Nico in a mission playing upstairs on this top floor. Instead, it looks as though it's relatively clear. Nico instead choosing to play just at the bottom of the stairs, still playing for a kill, but in quite a passive location. There's rotations been made, but really nobody playing them. Ooh, enemy detected outside. A mission? mission? How has he got away with that? I don't know, and well, doesn't get away with it for much longer as the MF has got him covered. It's a trade. It's a nomad. Not too bad from a mission. Mowgli heading upstairs as well, just uh, cautious of anyone else who may be above, but... Nobody's home. Now they have to deal with uh, with Skyty, who has been that main issue for them. Nico's on Spiral. The fact that they know that Nomad has been knocked off is phenomenal because that gives Nico a lot of uh, options for his rotations. Uh, MF again, creating these sledge holes, trying to look for an angle, will go for the nade. I really hope they bring their ace in to get part of that reinforced wall open. I really do because I think they need it at this stage. Nico, here he comes with the rotation. Are they aware? They have no idea. TX, maybe yes, he is. He's ready for it. 
And Nico's gone. That may be the turning point. Skyty. How well can he do? He needs to go big now. Skyty needs to know every single angle of this bathroom inside and out here as he is getting pressured from multiple angles. He does have a new jammer. It's going to stop the drone work coming through, but he looks away at the wrong time. And Mowgli comes off on top on that engagement. That's going to catapult the Lusant into the ascendancy here as Mowgli picks up the next two kills as well, going huge for his team. On the list of things you love to see. And Mowgli, there he is again. The MVP for me anyway, this series. Been phenomenal from start to finish. Has not had a bad game. And back onto match point again. And they get the defense, Holly. This could be the difference. It could be the difference maker indeed, if anybody can remember and cast their minds back to the start of this series. We saw Dead Inside attacking onto Garage a couple of times. And we saw it going one of two ways. They came out here with one win and two losses attacking onto this bomb site. Statistically, it should be a map and a, a site here for the Lusons. It all depends on how this push comes through. If Dead Inside neglect to push that piano area, then I'm sorry, but it isn't going to end all too well for them at all. If they choose to take that top floor control, they really could have a chance at staying in this. Basement. There's the Legion, the mighty Legion that Majestic loves to bring to the table. Fermite from Johnny. Oh, this is so tense. I really can't call it at this stage. This is way too back and forth. Simply because we, we see the defense now, I, I'm kind of favoring the Lucents again, Ollie. I'm favoring the Lucents, honestly. I think it's their game to lose at this point. I made a bold prediction back on Clubhouse, and I said that whoever wins on clubhouse they go on to win the whole thing because i think that this is going to be a 3-1 and that's the way they've been up right now mowgli going for a cheeky sp doesn't manage to land nico still having a bit of a bad day of things here on consulate really struggling in the death department and struggling in that kill department as well once again, it looks as though we're going for a very horizontal approach and drones mm -hmm. are going to flood the drone hole as yep. Johnny's going to figure out just when he needs to place his exothermic charge down. We do, of course, have Majestic up above. And honestly, the Lutons aren't too worried about it at this point. This is very bread and butter stuff for them. We know that that wall's going to get open. MF's going to sit at the back of the pillar. He's probably going to get a kill for his trouble. It's all pretty standard stuff. That's a huge kill coming in from Majestic. Kazar goes in to try and root him out of that top floor, but the push isn't enough. Majestic's going to win out onto that oh, engagement. He's that. actually playing all the way up as well. Huge stuff. A lot of angles being held. Nathan tries to peek onto the car. A mission takes a bit of damage. But nothing to worry about. Slaz in a great position as well. Has the Banshee shotgun in hand. Even has the uh, the shield fall back to towards Pike, which is what the X is actually playing right now. Just a matter of time. And I think dead inside, all of the pressure is on them. They have no control above. They are simply trying to take from the site a mission. A great shot. Well, the holographic eliminates MF. If that 1.5 times you'll see that every day. Nico gets TX as well, the man behind the pipes, and now that leaves Slaz all by his lonesome in the bomb site. There's a couple of important kills there that Dead Inside have managed to pick on up. Majestic's still got a huge part to play here as he knows that he's got these vertical holes to work from, and he could be very influential here. It just depends on how this push comes on through. You can see the four remaining attackers on your screen, all of them outside of the building at this point, just trying to pick angles in onto these defenders. Mowgli seeing a lot of damage there and returning very little. As it's Johnny that's going to be taking a couple of pot shots at him. Toxic Babe canisters now come through as 45 seconds enters and the attacker's terrified to push because they know that Majestic is playing upstairs. A mission now going for a bit of a rotation, maybe looking to make something happen as yet another Toxic Babe canister has been used. 
Skyty, he's looking to push his way on through as he's holding a tight angle on yellow, but as he accounted for the shotgun, it's not even the shotgun, it's the SMG 11. Slaz is going to find a kill. Johnny finishes off yes. in a mission, no. gets the kill onto <gasps> Slaz. The kills start to fly on through, but the diffuser's cold on the ground. It's majestic in the one versus oh, they two. The There's 15 seconds left in the diffuser. It's still cold. Nico and a mission have got a lot to do. A mission has recovered the diffuser. Is he going to be able to be given the time and space to get this plant down? Pre-firing as he goes, Majestic desperately trying to make something happen, but the plant has been confirmed. The attackers now can split up and look to try and hold different angles in the post plant, but it's on to Majestic to try and make something happen. He finds one, can he find the second? He's got plenty of time to work with here, and he's really searching out for this final kill, but no, gets caught inside a sprint animation and a mission. He does the business. He keeps dead inside in this for one more round. Both attacks working onto that basement. Did not look good for a long time for Dead Inside, but then all of a sudden, Peak started to come in. Uh, Lelusant started chasing for kills and they got punished for it. Round 15, off consulate. Round 15. I, I just, I just don't know anymore. I really don't know where to go. It's the kind of game that's going to be decided on one gunfight. It really is. There was... I don't know. It, it was... Yeah. Dead Inside, I feel like they got a little bit lucky there. There was times where that should have been a locked-in round for the Lusons. And they just got a little bit aggressive. They got a little bit overzealous. They got a bit bloodthirsty. And they were peeking for kills that they didn't really need to be peeking for. You shouldn't be able to get that many kills as four players playing outside of Garage and Yellow Stairs. Majestic's done a huge job to keep himself alive upstairs. He's barely been touched for the majority of the round. And it, it, it just comes under real unfortunate circumstances. Chasing after a kill onto a mission in the dying few stages. We know what's going to happen in this round. Skite is going to hold the bathroom like a pro, like we've seen him do it time and time again. And the loose ons are going to, you know, dance around and either win the engagement or lose a life and then win the engagement. And that's probably going to be quite a big difference maker in how this round plays. It's going to be how long can Skite keep control of that bathroom for? Even absolute linchpin in this entire thing. Okay. Nico already looking to play aggressive. Majestic's Aww. been down, but there's a trade off. Oli, again, they're chasing the game. Why are they chasing the game? Overtime match point. Nico has confirmed now died every single conceivable round of consular. And he's got half as many kills. He's having an absolute stinker in comparison to how we've seen him play and how we know he can perform. A C4 kill coming in onto Majestic. That's huge in itself, but who's going to take advantage of it now? Who's going to be the player that roams the way that Nico can? Four v four. Two minutes to go. Trade on both teams. Nomad for the Jaeger. All right, trade. Skyty, he's tucked away in bathroom, as he always is. That's his new home. He likes it, but it's been battered up quite a bit. Let's see if he can try and hold on to it. Mowgli inside a piano. Uh, and again, they're just playing around him. They know that he's no threat at the meantime. But obviously, as it starts to get into the later stages, whenever we look at, you know, 20 second mark, 10 second mark, whatever it is, that's whenever Skyty becomes a bit of a problem. They're just waiting for the opportune moment. I'm sure the wall is probably going to be impacted. That is being left soft. And then Skyty has to deal with that. Uh, Mowgli, again, has to be careful because the holes from below can be used against them. It's like trying to relax with a, a King Cobra in the room. You know that Skyty's there and you just can't, you know, you can't chill and play the piano. You know that there's something that you've got to do. Skyty, he's taken a huge portion of damage there. I can't believe that he's not been finished off, and he has. Mowgli coming in huge exactly when his team needs him. 
You've said it before, Demo, your MVP of the season, without a shadow of a doubt, has to be the MVP of this season. It's a huge kill over onto Sky Team. 30 seconds left, and the kills start to fly. Johnny finds one, but is it going to be enough? The answer is likely not. Slaz finds one. Mowgli gets the finisher, and that is going to be your game. Welcome, Renaissance, your grand finalists. Hello, Lusance. Put it away. Finally, we have our winner. What a map of Consulate and the French. They take down the Russian side. Very, very well played. MVP, MVP of the series, Mowgli. Very fitting for him. Astounding player right the way along.